To win this Supercars Championship is tough, bloody tough. Oh, huge block for Lowndes with big damage right front. That's very, very heavy contact for Lowndes. It takes dedication. Perfect score for Mark Winterbottom. Converted off the line and never looked back. You must have a great team behind you. Thank you. This is a home ground win. Thank you, guys. Well done, James Courtney. And rely on a little bit of luck. Never comes easy. Oh, he's oh, yeah, almost got him. Lounge runs wide. This is a game changer. You have to survive the bad days. Oh, and there's a touch. He's, he's turned. They both go around. This is what they did not want to see at Red Bull. And always remain focused on the prize. Garth Tander. He is the winner for 2007 from Toll HSV. Because when you get that number one in your car... Jamie Winker, the best in the business. Can't thank you guys enough, thank you. He's now alongside the best of all time. You're looking at a modern day grade of this game. There's simply no better feeling. Frosty leaves his mark on his hometown and on the 2015 championship. A very, very worthy winner. It's our last day of school for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship of 2016. And we're celebrating the Coates Hire Sydney 500 for the last time on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. We're in the beautiful sparkling city of Sydney this weekend for our grand finale, 15 kilometres to the west of the Opera House, the CBD, the Harbour Bridge and that gorgeous harbour. And how about the shootout earlier today because he broke the drought. Four years in the making, another pole position for Garth Tan removes his career tally on to 30. And the last time he did it was here in 2012, his last drive for the Holden Racing Team. Alex Somerset, Adrian Burgess, they knew how much that meant inside that garage. And all the boys celebrating as they watched Shane Van Gisbergen cross the line and Garth realised he'd done it. That was a mega moment, thoroughly enjoyable and well deserved, a great time. Here's the theatre of war today, and we saw some great racing yesterday for 250 k's, 74 laps, and we're going to do it again this afternoon. On the Virgin Australia Destination and Departures Board, Sydney Olympic Park is where we're at. 3.4 kilometres around this racetrack for 13 turns, an average speed of about 140 kilometres an hour. It's really tough on brakes. It's very hard on suspension. It's unbelievably hard on drivers around here. It's very, very hot around Sydney Olympic Park at this time of the year. Between the walls, it's slippery, uneven surface, concrete walls all around, big curbs. There's a lot to play for, and we are going to see a lot of action this afternoon. Three sectors, as always, the first of them through the complex turns two, three, and four, and the second intermediate down at turn number nine. That's the situation. There's our starting grid, and we've got the Sydney Olympic Park Railway Station there, the supercar paddock, and all set for our grand finale now. We're about 16-odd minutes away from the start of our final race of the year, race number 29, and what a race we expect it to be. We've crowned our champion, but it's elect, inverted commas, for Shane Van Gisbergen. He did an unbelievable job in 2016, and it's now an opportunity for us to celebrate some of the champions that have come before him. In the mid-90s, a proud Australian touring car formula entered a new era. These supercars and the stars who raced them became household names and is now regarded as the toughest series of its kind in the world. Glenn Seaton affectionately known as the baby-faced assassin, former star at Nissan, who reveled in the new V8 formula driving a Ford. Seaton's 97 championship win was the second of his career. In more than 200 races, he scored 17 wins, 54 podiums, and nine pole positions. After a season in Europe, Craig Lowndes returned home and to his winning ways. Together with HRT, he won the 98 and 99 titles. CL's stellar career spans more than 600 races. The first to chalk up 100 race wins in the sport and a five-time Barry Sheen medal winner. A work rate and a work ethic unlike any other. Mark Scaife is one of the all-time greats. He dominated at the turn of the century, winning three straight championships. Five titles in all. 
six Bathurst wins and 90 race victories. Marcus Ambrose, strike rate remains the envy of many in the sport, represented here today by legendary team owner Jimmy Stone. Ambrose claimed back-to-back -back titles in 03 and 04 for the Stone Brothers and Ford, the launch pad for a career in the United States, the most successful Aussie ever in NASCAR. Tough, aggressive, intimidating. Traits that made Russell Ingall the enforcer. After a decade of trying and finishing runner-up in the series four times, Ingall finally broke through in 05, a dual Bathurst winner for Holden, but a champion for Ford. The finish to the 2006 championship is still one of the most talked about. At age 23, Rick Kelly became the youngest in this supercar era to take the crown. It was also a victory for the team owned by the Kelly family. Twice a winner at Bathurst for Holden, but these days a front man for Nissan. Garth Tander's winning rate in 2007 was impressive. 15 victories, 40% of the races on the way to the title. Also back-to-back -back championships for the Toll HSV team. He's now amassed 54 race wins, 29 poles and 90 podiums. The three-time Bathurst winner is relentless. A dramatic finale on the streets of Olympic Park to the 2010 series. James Courtney delivering DJR its first title in 15 years and his first. Internationally credentialed in carts and single-seaters, now among the supercar heroes at home. This man is arguably the greatest of all time. Jamie Wincup has six titles to his name, more than any other driver, including four in a row between 2011 and 2014. He's also a member of the elite club to reach 100 race wins, a winner for both Ford and Holden. This is the final race for Mark Winterbottom, carrying number one, for now. He's the first name in the record books to have both a Supercars title and a Dunlop Series win. 38 race wins, 35 poles, 113 podiums, all proudly for the Blue Oval. A new page will be written today in a special chapter for this iconic sport. Ladies and gentlemen, the championship trophy has been delivered by some of the greatest touring car races the world has ever seen. We present the Virgin Australia Runway of Supercars Champions. A touching moment. And our thanks to Virgin Australia, our naming rights partner for 2016 in support of the Supercars Championship and great to celebrate our champions of yesteryear. It's a beautiful scene out there at the moment. We're looking forward to the start of the race with Garth Tander off the pole. Now, he's recently been awarded the CAM Service Star for invaluable service, selfless dedication and continued support of motorsport competitors, crews, officials and their families. Let's pause now and hear from the Reverend Gary Coleman. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let us talk to God. Gracious, sovereign God and Father, we're most thankful to have come to the climax of our day and the climax of our event the climax of our year and the climax of racing at this track as it will now join the glory story of the other 20 plus former race tracks of this great city. We acknowledge that our successes have been achieved by standing on the shoulders and the inspiration of these great champions and heroes and we honour them with our thanks. Lord, to be able to leave here with satisfaction and applause, I respectfully ask that you assist us in the safe completion of our race the continued perfection of our drivers and crews and of our photographers. Help them all to perform well and with daring. Jesus, Christmas tells your story, and we anticipate a safe trip home and the enjoyment of our holidays with families and friends. In expectation, I ask this in the rich name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's a lovely man, Gary Coleman, and congratulations on that CAMS service star for his wonderful service to motorsport. Well done also, Greg Rust, in the Virgin Australia Runway of Champions. Time now for our national anthem with Monica Oriel.
What a beautiful scene from high above the Coates Hire chopper cam gives us a perfect view of Sydney Olympic Park on a sparkling Sydney day. Our destination is Sydney for our grand finale, our eighth and final run on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park, a venue that's delivered so much entertainment over the years. And we're looking forward to visiting Newcastle at this time in 2017. Between now and then, a lot of racing to come, including today, 74 laps, 250 kilometres yesterday. Picture perfect job done by Jamie Wincup. Red Bull Racing Holden Commodore to take the victory. A great performance, Garth Tan to position number two and an extraordinary comeback from Shane Van Gisbergen to clinch the title. It's a formality today and we're looking forward to seeing whether or not there are any other scores to settle. Notably, a wonderful battle going on for third place in the championship between Scotty McLaughlin and Craig Lowndes and a lot more to play out on that one. Garth Tan, a wonderful moment in the championship to be part of that champion celebration. But here it is, your final race with the team, final race of the year. How are you feeling? Ah, looking forward to it. Starting in the best spot. So, um, yeah, we had a pretty good race pace yesterday. So, Shane was very fast. So, we'll just see who gets the first corner first and then uh, settle in. 250 k's around here. It's a fair bit hotter today. So, uh, I'll be interested to see what happens with Tyre Deg. So, uh, just looking forward to getting started. Yeah, we wish you all the best. Good luck. Cheers. SVG, uh, mate, uh, congrats again. Awesome days today. Uh, so good to see you out there doing what you love the best. Different mindset, though, today, starting yeah. from the front row. Yeah, definitely. Garth did an awesome lap in the shootout watching him. I made a mistake on mine, but looking forward to the race. He's going to be trying hard his last race there. Nothing to lose. And, you know, for me, I'm just out to have some fun. So some good guys up the front here. Looking forward to the battle. How's, how is, I mean, it's been nearly 24 hours since uh, since yeah. the day and since the moment and all, everything that went on. I mean, you, you left us hanging. It was drama filled yesterday. Yeah, sorry about that. But, uh, <laughs> I tried not to, but yeah, it was pretty exciting and didn't sleep much last night. I was pretty excited and, um, you know, went for dinner with the family and that and celebrated with them. It was pretty cool. So today, go and have some fun. Keep a straight car so we can do a good burnout at the end. I think that's what everyone's waiting for, mate. Good luck. Yeah, a lot of pressure on that. Everyone's talking about it. <laughs> Scott McLaughlin, final race of the year. You're fighting for that third position in the championship. Nearly got it. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, pretty mixed emotions at the moment. Um, pretty excited about what's going, what's ahead. But uh, yeah, it's it's all pretty real at the moment. So I'm looking forward to it. Going to go give my best shot and see how we go. I know you're being, you know, keeping it calm at the moment. But Gary was having a laugh as he always does, and he said. I, did I give him the boot or did he give me the boot? <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to work that one out. But, no, nah, look, it's, uh, it's, it's why I love this team and uh, why we get along so well. So uh, going to miss it. But, um, you know, we we'll always remain really good friends. Enjoy that final race. Thank you. Cheers. You've got to love some of the fun that they have there at, uh, at Gary Rogers Volvo. Gary always coming up with some crazy things. Nice way to have a bit of a laugh as they wrap up a special chapter with Scott McLaughlin and that team. Time now to look at some of the strategy considerations, the key numbers for this race that matter. Here's Neil Crompton in the Hino Hub. Let's play it again one more time, Hino Hub style for 2016 for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship and analyse our race facts and our important strategic information. So first and foremost, let's get into the basic race info. This is our eighth and final visit to Sydney Olympic Park and what a ride, what a privilege it's been to race supercars here. Coming into this weekend, seven rounds hosted. And remember that yesterday, Jamie Wincup added to his tally. He came here with five. He's now got six wins. And in 2015, these guys that battled out yesterday's championship were the same guys that were battling out at the top of the pop chart. Now, let's have a look at our basic detail. 250 k's for 74 laps. Around about 240-odd litres of United E85. Rules require you drop 140 litres of fuel into the car, but it doesn't fit because the usable tank capacity is about 110 litres, so therefore you've got to stop at least twice. Fuel burn varies enormously from car to car, driver to uh, driver, day to day, a little over 3.1 uh, litres and then this is your starting fuel because you've got to get out there form up and go so about 106 litres going to give you a range in the order of 34 5 or 6 laps with a critical lap the point where you fuel up and get home around about lap number 38 so key considerations we've now got some key data very important as we came into the weekend we'd never used the soft tyre here in racing they'd practiced on them but now we've got a better understanding once again this number remains high we saw the lexus rcf safety car jump into the game yesterday 
the tyre deg is pretty high here, so more high than medium. And therefore, you can get a gain with the undercut, but the problem is if you come in too early, try and jump in front of those that you're racing, you're asking more of the tyre. So if you watched our coverage yesterday, you saw those that delayed getting their tyres on to have younger, fresher tyres in the back end of the race were in better shape. And you've always got to avoid that horrible double stacking in the pit lane. So this is one of the key strategies fuel to the end now in 2015 on the sunday we saw a lot of this people came in early grabbed their fuel ran it out to the critical lap and came home remember that leaders on one side laps on the other but yesterday it was this one even tire the reason is this place is hurting the soft tire so they've got to look after the tires two stops therefore three sequences so running as long as you dare pretty much to the end of that fuel load. You can see here there's very little fuel left in it when you get to that window around lap 25. Gas her up and go, and then go beyond your critical lap because you've got some flexibility, and then home your race. Don't worry about the blue strategy. So we've got a mixed bag in terms of the grid. Garth Tand is on pole position for the first time in four years. 74 laps, 250 kilometres to take out our championship in 2016. It's been a privilege to be here this year, and we're looking forward to everything that comes next this afternoon. It's going to be fantastic. We certainly are looking forward to it. And here's Ryan Walkinshaw with Simon McNamara and James Courtney. The final run for the Holden Racing Team as we know it. The factory team since 1990 to 2016. The famous Red Squad. Let's have a look on board at the final time also of Sydney Olympic Park for a hot lap with James Courtney. Hey guys and girls, it's JC here. Uh, we're just at Homebush and I'm about to take you on a flying lap around here. It's been pretty good for me in the past. Wrapped up the championship and uh, won a couple of races here. Boy from the West, I love this place. Shame it's the last one. So we're up to six gear, hard on the brakes into one. All the way down to second. The thing's dancing in the rear, all over the curb. Out into that gutter there because you get a bit more drive on the concrete. So, little trick, don't tell anyone. This corner, two, three, four. It's absolutely bananas. Look how much curb you use. Way up and over. Seems like a rally car through here. So, try and survive that. Probably a little bit grubby then. This is crazy. The track narrows up here. It's fourth gear, super quick. Into the second chicane, back to second. Over the curb, right up against those tyres. Slap that wall a couple of times. It's today already. Count the fifth, back to second. Fly this thing. Hey, up against the wall again. Nice little breather. It's like a roller coaster down into nine here. You're up to fifth gear. Over the top one. Hey, on the brakes. Modulating the brakes the whole way in. I use second. Some of the lads use first here. I'm just lazy. Can't be bothered, bothered with the second change. Back up to fourth here. The last little complex. Back to second. A lot of curb again. Curb again in the second last corner. Last corner. Monster this thing. Up and over. Out against the wall. Slight that thing. It's a wild ride. Doesn't look that flash on paper, but it's, it's crazy here. Thanks, everyone. Hope we have a good weekend. Well, it certainly is a wild ride. And then... James Courtney there on position three behind Garth Tander and Shane Van Gisberg. Alongside him is David Reynolds. And the last time, as I said before, for the factory squad, what an incredible fairy tale for Garth Tander, the last drive for Holden Racing Team, as Neil Crompton joins me back in the commentary box. Couldn't have scripted it like that. Unbelievable. Could Went down into the garage before, Mark, and spoke to Adrian Burgess and Garth Tander and big moment you would not have imagined that that could be possible so tremendous performance congratulations to them the end of a chapter in innings that we were fortunate to be a part of you had tremendous success with that organization over many years and what a fitting way for them to close what's been a very big story in Australasian motorsport so two heavyweights at the front of the grid Tander and Van Gisbergen Let's have a look on the Cooper's Mild Ale starting grid and see where your favourite driver lines up. Row one, Tander and Van Gisbergen, as I just mentioned. Second row of the grid from the Holden Racing Team, James Courtney, David Reynolds. What a great performance for Davey Penwright and Erebus. Freightliner Racing, excellent performance for him. Together with uh, Timmy Slade is Scotty McLaughlin. That Volvo is going to be quick again this afternoon. Looking further back, we've got Todd Kelly and Jamie Wincup. Jamie made that mistake in the shootout if you weren't with us earlier in the day. Will Davison and Rick Kelly. 
followed by Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowndes. And yesterday, late in the race, it was a difficult run for Lowndes, who lost some ground. Therefore, there's only nine points in it now between he and Scotty McLaughlin for this championship battle for third place. Further down the order, you've got Moffat and Coulthard. Uh, and lost it in there with Scotty Pye, Tim Blanchard. They were doing an engine change on that car when I walked through the paddock before. My bumper Lee Holtz were very unhappy with the behaviour and balance of that car. Dale Wood and Shay Davies, Andre Heimgartner and Chris Pitha. Chris is having his last run this weekend with Super Black Racing. Unfortunately, some damage yesterday. That's the scene. We're bathed in beautiful sunlight at the moment. Hot conditions. 26 runners. 250 kilometres, 74 laps. Time certainly will be at play if that becomes an issue. Yesterday we had the safety car intervention again. And right about now, those guys that were feeling the heat from yesterday realise that, whoa, we've got to go and do it all again. And the intensity, even in the last race, and even though some things have been decided, will not change one iota. So a whole range of cars, as always, with multiple cameras in every direction, all 26 of them. Here we are, Scotty McLaughlin. You can pick up the emotion in his voice as he now farewells Gary Rogers Motorsport and Wilson Security. This is the outgoing champion with the number one on the car. For the last time, Mark Winterbottom, Fabian Coulthard, sharp livery on the car this weekend. Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske, new teammate for him next year. Jamie Wincup, six championship titles and was in with a shout all the way to the last lap yesterday before this man actually came home and did an amazing job in the back end of the race and ends up with a cushion of 170 points now heading into this race, therefore can't be beaten, even if it goes pear-shaped, and sometimes it does. It certainly does. Great drive by David Reynolds yesterday, starting from the back. He comes through. Also a fantastic drive for Todd Kelly, who is on for fifth position and made a little mistake at turn 11, went into the tyre barrier there on the left-hand side. So great performance from Todd Kelly over the course of the weekend. Just over our shoulder here on the pit wall, you can see Grant McPherson. We affectionately call him Shippy, engineer to Shane, uh, Shane Van Gisberg. And he was emotional yesterday after the title. I said to him just now, what have you told Shane before heading out to this race? He's the champion elect. He said, you've won here three times. Let's make it four to finish the weekend. That's a pretty good advice. Now, we've covered all the last and finals in the teams and the drivers that are going to change for next year. But it is also the last Sydney 500. And have we seen some action here over the years? It has been an incredible racetrack for so many reasons and I think the last race here is going to be a gem. Thank you Greg Murphy and Greg Rust, Rihanna Crean down in the paddock as well and in the pit lane as the balance of the cars come into position for the last time ever racing on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park race number 29 of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Green. we're about to officially crown our champion for the 2016 season it's Garth Panda from the pole position alongside Shane Van Gisbergen as the lights change and a ripping start by Tanda. Van Gisbergen drops straight into second. Courtney's in third with Reynolds up on the outside of turn one. There's a lot of dust as everybody searches for their line through turn one. Great start by Tanda. He has bolted on cold tyres. Look at the margin that he's got. His teammate is trying to sneak up on the inside to grab third away from Reynolds. So Tanda, followed by Gizzy. Then David Reynolds hangs on to third. Courtney, followed by Scotty McLaughlin. And a little bump there from Courtney into Dave Reynolds. That was a superb start by Garth Tanda. Minimised the wheel spin, and he was able to basically not have any drama. He was right out on the outside line and turned straight across at turn one. There's Jason Bright, the final time for Brad Jones Racing for Jason's been with them for a long time. Got their first win. That was Scotty McLaughlin having a last minute dive down the inside of James Courtney at turn eight. I think I saw Blanchard's car looking worse for wear. So that's two of the cars for Brad Jones Racing with damage on them on the opening lap. We're hearing that Triple H's got some damage. Craig Lowndes to the battle for third position with Scott McLaughlin, only nine points between them. They're going to make contact there, Dale Wood and Jason Bright. So in behind Shane Van Gisbergen is a very fast David Reynolds, putting a huge amount of pressure on car 97. Nice exit. And how's the gap for Tanda? He's made 1.1 seconds on the opening lap. Beautiful start, move right out. This is Australia Avenue, down the end of the straight at 250 kilometres an hour. And he didn't even have to cover. He had so much gap going into turn one on the opening lap. He just moved it out of the racing line 
You see everybody going into there, a lot of damage. You're right, there's a huge amount of damage to the front of car 21, Tim Blanchard. So I wonder whether he's got together somehow with Jason Bright. Mm. And if that's the case, that's both team cars together. We'll chase that story for you. Margin in hand for Garth Tander. Right front guard missing off Tim Blanchard's car for the cool drive entry. It's got uh, some water damage there as well, so coolant leak in the background, so they need to shut it down. It's making engine temp until they can resolve that. So big gap now out to 1.6 seconds for Tander over Van Gisbergen. Reynolds looks racy, and he needs to be because Courtney is quick at this location. Dale Woods in the pit lane as well. Have a go oh. at David. He had that thing dancing on its nose on the run into turn nine. This is an angry pack. It's got McLaughlin in it as well. Remember, Bear Gisbergen turned Dave Reynolds around last year at Phillip Island when Dave was in contention to win the championship. So looking back from Van Gisbergen now, there's a bit of history between these two guys. Dave Reynolds now knows that Van Gisbergen has wrapped the championship up. And these guys, James Courtney and Dave Reynolds, do not care one bit about the championship. They're just on to have the best race, the final race, at Sydney Olympic Park. Tander's comfortably in control. He's got that margin out to 1.8 seconds now, so he can afford to roll out ever so slightly once he gets it north of about two seconds and just take a little bit of the energy out of the tyre and just preserve the brakes just a little, because remember, what I mentioned in the Hino Hub about looking after the soft tyre here, they'll invariably, depending on safety car intervention, go for the even tyre usage strategy. So they've got to make these soft tyres go a long way. Now Bright, even though delayed and back in the pack in 24th position, is also very quick. He's in fresh air there at the moment and in the third sector quicker than anybody. Watch the rear wheels of the Holden Racing Team car. Beautiful torque conversion. Very little in the way of wheel spin for Tanda. And he bolted on the run down to turn one, did it easily. Here's the wider shot. Shane recognised straight away that he was done by Tanda and so then went into cover mode to make sure that he didn't drop even more spots. If you recall his start yesterday, by the time he did the first 500 metres of the race and it's 350 off to the first corner, he was in plenty of trouble. Here's the view on board with James Courtney. Next row of the grid, Shane covers making sure that there's a tonne and a half in the way just in case James thought it was a great idea to sneak on down the inside. And have a look at Garth Tander. He doesn't have to cover at all. He was out there on the perfect race line. And then there was a little bit of push and shove with Dave Reynolds. Now, yesterday, Mostert made contact with Mark Winterbottom in this exact spot. So here he is now, up in behind Jason Bright. And as they concertina, he has hit the back of the BOC Commodore very hard. That's Rick Kelly re-emerging. So this is the next lap and big slide there for Rick. Now is Rick giving the spot back because he went through the chicane? Because he's come out of the front and let him by. And he's also in the pit lane Mark. There he is. Singledness and Alderman. Yeah, I can't work that one out. I don't know whether there was contact and he went through the chicane so he gave the spot back or not. So here's Van Gisbergen just leading at turn eight. He's got a little bit of a gap over Dave Reynolds now. That has uh, leaked out to about 0.7 margin. I understand they brought Rick in because he had a flat tyre, so that's probably because of some of that earlier contact. Thanks, Rihanna. That's, um, I thought it was because the Boston contact and he went straight through there. And there's a big lock-up for Moffat. It gets down the inside of Fabian Coulthard. Just in front there is... Chaz Mostert. Now, Moffat's pace in the race was good yesterday. He came through the field very aggressively. We, what we're hearing is that Rick Kelly and Craig Lowndes found the same piece of real estate, and uh, that's one of the reasons why there was some trouble there. So when you look at Lowndes down in 13th at the moment, he can't have a triple eight. We've already seen Rick Kelly in the lane as a result of that puncture that Rihanna detailed a moment ago. Now, Garth's got that margin out where I described it before. It's north of two seconds which means he doesn't need to keep an eye on the mirror because nobody's going to sneak on by with that sort of cushion. So they're just uh, temp probing these tyres and understanding what this will be off the Rick Kelly car, where the damage is. Looks like I had a cut there. Yeah. 
I've just gone the other way, guys, into Team Vortex and had a word to Ken Douglas. Now, there is obviously some bodywork uh, damage to Craig Lowndes' car, but nothing mechanical that he's reporting at the moment. They had a slight rise in water temperature, but they think that's more about traffic rather than an issue with the car as such. So the update, Rusty. Meantime, Scotty McLaughlin, who's well in the hot air and the traffic there at the moment, is still very quick nonetheless on this lap. Quicker again. Now, where does this land? Well, and the recipient... The lucky winner for today is Todd Kelly. He's got that plastic bag back. We'll spike temp, so we'll keep an eye on what happens there The car number seven. They'll be seeing live data from that car via telemetry, and that'll have a big impact around a place where temperature's critical and they measure and manage it very carefully. That was a nice move there, Jamie Winkup. For eighth position down the inside of Michael Caruso, who's got the Beware of Strangers livery, genuine his best endorsement from Nissan Motor Company this weekend, so different colours for Michael, and this is the pass. This is turn nine, end of Dawn Fraser Avenue. Nice, clean manoeuvre. Got far enough up to not have any of the clumsy issues we saw yesterday with Van Gisbergen and Mark Winterbottom in the same spot. And there's the gap that Tander's got. And there's Shane Van Gisbergen, and David Reynolds. And a bit That's of that margin good. has leaked away. A couple of tenths of a second. There's a local yellow down there for that bit of bodywork debris. It's part of the inner guard, I think, from one of the cars. So it's 1.99 seconds now, Tanted Van Gisbergen. So the gap is compressed ever so slightly as we take those great shots around the back of turn five. We'll go back down into the lane for more on what happened to Blanchard. Yeah, thanks, Crawley. Yeah, Blanchard's car. Obviously, there was a, a lot of damage to the front of it. It's got a water leak. The radio has been pierced. What, what happened down there, mate? Yeah, a bit of a concertina down there off the start. And, you know, I think everyone was running into everyone there. And obviously, uh, I've ended up with the worst of it. And uh, it's damaged the front of the car pretty badly. And, uh, yeah, it's it for us for the day. It's a pretty disappointing way to finish the season, mate. So, although, good news that you will be back here next year. Yeah, you always want to try and be on a bit of a positive. So, you know, it'll be a bit of a long Christmas break now. Good on you, thanks. Thank you. Tim and his family have acquired a new racing entitlements contract and they'll remain a part of the Brad Jones Racing family in the years ahead. Here's Dale Wood with a big lock-up on the run to turn nine. We'll check that margin again. It's starting to disappear. So can't relax too much now, Garth Tander, because the numbers are going the other way. It's back down to 1.6 seconds now, Tander over Van Gisbergen. Some of that is the normalisation of tyre pressures and temps as well. Then the boys feel what they've got. They start to mess around with front and rear anti-roll bars in the car just to trim them up. A little bit of a fiddle with the brake bias and then get settled into a rhythm. And it looks like that early phase, the cold tyre phase, was very good for Garth Tander and no traffic helps that mission. And now as things settle down, there's very good pace in the Van Gisbergen car. No surprise when you consider what they did yesterday with both their cars. For sure they Consistency is very good. Now, HRT don't need a safety car for that debris on the road down at Turn 1 because the two cars are very close and one of them will have to stack. That would be James Courtney as it currently sits. And that's Dale Wood's car in there as well. So the last time we saw that was locking up on the run into Turn 9. He did actually get round the corner, but some other issue going on here at the moment. So he's had a pretty difficult weekend. I think there was some contact in all that other stuff that went on down at turn two. So, and uh, it's a sill panel on the right-hand side there looks pretty dangerous. So according to the Bureau at the moment, it's uh, 28 degrees out there on this beautiful Sydney day. Perfect to go and hit one of the many beaches or harbour areas around here. Not so nice inside a roaring hot supercar. And these guys are working hard for their dollars this afternoon. And how's this number, Scopey? You'd like to hear this one on the radio. You key on and you go, there's only 67 laps to go. <laughs> That's right. And then you hope that that was six or seven laps to go. <laughs> I used to tell them, don't tell me anything until there's 20 to go. Yes, because right. on a 75 lap race or 74 lap race like this, you sort of try to split it up into three zones, which you actually went through in the Hino Hub in terms of an even tyre strategy. So it's a, it's a hard physical place. It's like Clipsal in many ways. No rest. Big risk versus reward, unforgiving layout, and the slightest mistake has big consequences. So the con concentration level is high, the physicality of the place is high, and the intensity, as you can see there now, with the battle with the lead, and Reynolds versus Courtney in particular, they're really at it. And what amazes me, and we've seen this a bit, how do they manage with those Red Bull cars to do laps like they do this deep into the race? Because Shane Van Gisbergen has just knocked off the 
fastest lap of the race on that last lap. One minute, 28.5. He's pulled that gap out back from 2.2 at its peak. It's down now, he's halved it. It's 1.1 seconds. So, oh, Frosty went wide and actually off. He's actually come back in the other direction there from turn nine in the Bottolo car. So we just caught the tail end of that. So that 2.2 is now down to one second. So all that I said before about roll out, look after your tyres, manage the gap, don't worry about anyone poking the nose up the inside of your car. That's yesterday's newspaper. That's yesterday's newspaper. He ditched that concept because now he's got the blowtorch on him from Shane Van Gisbergen. And there's nothing worse than the feeling of the car behind getting bigger in the mirrors. And the other car that's in the garage right now is Dale Wood. We saw a fair bit of action going on down at turn two on the first lap, mate, and uh, I can tell by the disappointment on your face, something happened down there and uh, it's put you out here. Yeah, I'm spewing. I got hit up the arse. I'm not really sure by who. I just I put myself in that position down there, so I've got no one else to blame by myself, but I'm just so spewing on it. It's not the way you want to go out. It's the last race. It's the last race for Nissan, and I'm dead set spewing. Yeah, mate. Just have to get back out. 0.9 of a second is the gap now between Garth Pander and Shane Van Gisbergen. So tucked in behind Nick Perkett, we're riding with Jamie Wincup at the moment. This is the run down to turn number nine. Big roller coaster in the braking area here. The cars run into the dip and out the other side. They get all light in the process. Look at that gap diminishing. It's down to three quarters of a second now, Scapey. So clearly better, longer range balance in the Red Bull car at the moment. And that's been one of the incredible strengths of their performance this year is consistent pace. Now here's Mark Winterbottom about to arrive in the wrong direction. Attacking turn nine from the other way, making it a right-hander, not a left-hander. <laughs> so a uh, little outbreak there. He didn't lose a heap of time, but time lost is time lost. And that's a frustration for him. He's down in 17th now, but he's splitting the Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske cars. So he's currently in 17 he's got Fabian in front and Scotty Pye just behind he's been the biggest loser if you look at the pluses and minuses he's lost four spots because he qualified 13th there so he's back in 17th as you said but Mostert his teammate is the biggest winner he's gained five positions to be currently in 14th so the Fords have really struggled especially today they couldn't really work out why as a race car this year they just haven't had consistent pace and at places like this in particular in street circuits they haven't had a car that is agile enough to front meaning responsive enough and good in the short radius corners and they don't put their power down well enough either this is start, starting to heat up with van gisberg and right up in behind tander gas now starting to move the car around just a little so the run down to turn nine that time he came off the wall he's done the same in the run between 10 and 11 just moves the car half a car which is the center of the road but that's just signaling that this won't be an easy passage and just making sure that there's not a clear easy run down the inside a lot at stake last race of the year tander we're uncertain of his future in supercar competition he wants to go out on a high started in the perfect position on the pole second yesterday he's done enough racing in a supercar to know exactly how to position the vehicle and how to play a hard game but not one that will tip him into the fence frankly i think he's still smarting after what happened on the gold coast earlier this year as well so if you remember our coverage earlier in the year you had that big moment with fabian coulthard and uh, whether you're right wrong or indifferent in motorsport whenever you're involved in big incidents of any description aside from everybody's favorite drivers and who blames who you don't want to be involved in that stuff and there is residual damage it does hurt you it does no doubt about it and for Garth there'd be a lot of emotion attached as we said before superb job to qualify pole for its final drive for Holden Racing Team and just the relationships that you have in the team and the people around you as we saw with Scott McLaughlin we've seen with Jason Bright for Brad Jones Racing there are a lot of emotional people and attachments as a consequence of the time that you're with the particular team as we're on board Van Gisberg and right up in behind you can see the the body language of Garth's car, it's now moving around more, using more road. And what you said before about just moving it over slightly is just the gamesmanship of, of positioning the car in a way that indicates I'm not going to let you straight by. Remembering uh, that... The, a little bit more front grip and the next stop week, is available. That's Shane Van Gisbergen just wants a little bit more front grip. 
but one of the things now is that Courtney is going to try to do the undercut. This is important. Sam Edwards, so while the first pit stop goes on, listen, we're just looking at uh, your, go your cars out there at the moment. The first one being Cam Waters. It has been an incredibly tough weekend for you, fellas. Uh, the performance is just not there. Yeah, you're right. I know, but I want to know why, mate. Oh, well, if we knew why, look, we're just struggling. You know, we struggled on the streets of the Gold Coast as well. And, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, you know, our car just doesn't seem to suit the street circuits at the moment. And, you know, it's just not climbing the curbs as good oh, as the guys would like. So it's a bit of power down, a bit of turn in. It's a bit of everything. You know, there's not one thing. If it was one thing, you know, we, we could target it. So, yeah, it's challenging. You know, we're trying different things on all the cars. We're trying to get ahead around it really for, for next year at the moment so some of those things are positive you know i think chaz is happy with his car from what he's saying on the radio so maybe the direction we've gone with that's a, a positive but you know, it's so incredibly close out there you know when when the whole field are you know lapping at very similar lap times you can't qualify where we did and uh, unfortunately it just makes for a tough day okay good luck Cheers. it's tightening up at the top now do they bring tander in because they've got Courtney done, they've done him earlier, and that way there's not going to be the double stack scenario, the two Holden Racing Team cars. I reckon ideally they'd like to run longer and deeper, but he's clearly under threat at the moment from Van Gisbergen, stressing these tyres. But the, every lap that they can stay out there in the Holden Racing Team car means you shorten up the next sequence. But he's under attack at the moment. Any tick of the clock, any tick of the clock, you're going to see Van Gisbergen have a lunge here. So he is going to have a crack somewhere in this next lap for sure. Look at the body language. So on the run down to turn nine is one possibility. The other one is down at turn one. Yeah, it's using less road everywhere. Way less, yeah. way less. So Garth's really starting to slide up now. So this is one of the spots getting a good run into turn eight. So watch Van Gisberg and focus on where he positions the car. Look how much of that curb he used to the left. Now what he'll do is try and use any benefit, he's not close enough, of the draft from the preceding car, but he still just has a little sniff of the fresh air down there, and he's gonna be right on him. So the next opportunity to think about is on the run down at turn one. He's right with him, Van Gisbergen. So this is now the run. Garth moves it across. That's the cover that I spoke about before, turn 11. Now he's close enough. The focus for Van Gisbergen is dealing with the last corner, making sure that he doesn't slide the car too much. Garth is an old hand. Coming into the weekend, 575 supercar races. But he's got the champion elect all over him at the moment. Thinks about it, not quite. Oh, just about to say, Garth was going to move it over and he didn't, but he's got a good run now. Got a perfect run out of turn one. This is a bumpy braking area in a high risk spot. Very narrow on the way into turn two and he backs it back away. That's a good, sensible decision from Van Gisbergen because that would be very easy to lock a wheel over the bump and spear into the side of the HRT car. And in undercut land as you watch Mark Winterbottom transit the lane, James Courtney's flying. He's just done the fastest lap of the race on a 28-2. Problem is, he's got to go a long way on that tyre set, but he's making a net gain on these guys at the moment because they're fumbling each other. Ryan Walkinshaw in the foreground, Simon McNamara in behind. Garth actually eased it away a car length on this last lap. Once you start to suck down the hot air from the preceding car, it does get that much harder. And there's quite a different dynamic going on there now because, as you said, the used tyre or as the tyres run further into this first stint the performance of the Red Bull car is clearly better using less road a little brake lock up there for Will Davison does he make contact with the tyres oh he had to turn it right very hard so he had to hold the car to the right for longer which has allowed Craig Lowndes to get by now that's important because they share the same boom so if Lowndes is in front of Will Davison he will get pit priority if there's a safety car. We've also got Jamie Wincup very fast out there at the moment, Mark, in sixth position. He's just done his personal best in the race. It's about uh, half a second away from the time that James Courtney's done on those fresh tyres. But Jamie looking pretty quick. When you consider where he's at in the race on the 15th lap, to be doing his personal best lap is pretty impressive. Twitter's looking at our... 
numbers and the times that Courtney's doing, he's actually very close to undercutting Tanda and Van Gisbergen now with that pace. Yeah, and he's continuing to march on. He just moved the lap record again. Well, sorry, the fastest lap of the race, I apologise. So, 1 minute 28.17. So another tenth quicker on that lap for Courtney. So he's making a real gain. He's got to run longer on the tyres, though. So when these guys get on their newer tyres, right. they get a little benefit as well. And remember, there's a game in the way you deliver the fuel. 140 litres is the rule requirement that must be delivered. It'll get delivered in two parts, so you can either slightly over or under fill relative to those that you're racing. As we go back to the replay of Turn 9 and skating down the inside, is Jamie Wincup on Nick Perkett. He did it cleanly. Here's the onboard from Jamie's point of view. The cars get so unsettled on the rise out the other side at turn nine. Nick knew he was there, did a good job to give him space. Dave Reynolds has made ground too, whilst Garth and Shane have been racing each other. Dave Reynolds has closed that gap to just over two seconds behind. And it's actually costing Van Gisbergen time now. It's costing him time. And because they're both racing each other hard, Courtney, theoretically, has jumped them. Or if he hasn't, he's very, very close to it at the moment. And Garth is signalling that he is not going to blink here. <laughs> absolutely. He absolutely is not going to blink. Make no mistake about this. Remember, he was the winner at Sandown in September in the Sandown 500 with Warren Luff. It was a great race. Let's get downstairs quickly with Greg. There was a bit of commotion here at the Holden Racing Team pit when James Courtney came in before. He took on 43 litres based on the United fuel rule, but the main problem, Crompo, was that the gun failed on the right front for Courtney. The HRT boys have changed it. No dramas. They grabbed the spare and sorted. They must have done a great job in recovery then because James is uh, pressing on and doing great speed. And just looking at the corrected timing, he's well in this game at the moment. So if there was a delay, it was minimal. This is a great exchange between two hardheads out here at the moment, Van Gisbergen and Tanda. Driving the wheels off these things. The last lap for both of them, 29.3 for Tanda, 29.25 for Van Gisbergen. And that's about one second slower than their peak times. So they haven't actually taken that much grip and energy out of the tyre pace. You can see that uh, Shane is also just trying to ingest a bit of cooler air. That's a relative term, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's not really cool, is it? But it's, it's also about understanding the dynamic of this race. Ben Gisbergen, fantastic season. Come in to today as champion-elect. No pressure on him to perform today other than his own pressure to finish off the season well. Garth Tander has been a stalwart of Holden Racing Team. Joined the team from 2008 has enjoyed great success and will move out of this team at the end of this afternoon. Did a superb job to qualify on pole position, his first pole since 2012 on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. And that's just a great shot. The Coates Hire chopper of turn nine, just next to the Novotel, there's the train station on the right-hand side. So the dynamics of a battle like this, there's always different circumstances, there's always different things going on in the driver's mind. And Van Gisbergen, as I said, has nothing to lose. Nor is Tanda. <laughs> no, that's right. Nothing whatsoever. Now, the other interesting thing in this is that uh, Garth just managed to hold that, that buffer. Here we are with David Reynolds, still in third position, 2.1 seconds from the lead. So he's a long way from out of this one. He's right there. But one of the interesting things as Jamie peels off is that James Courtney's got 12 and a half seconds of fresh air in front of him so he's got a clear track and it's going to hurt him a little bit when he gets near the end of this stint having grabbed those tyres so early because he hasn't broken it into even parts I reckon you've got about 12 seconds left here mate give us a straight piece driver there's a couple of leaves mate grab those couple of leaves there please give us about I reckon about five seconds left mate the point I wanted to make about Courtney is that with that time that he's got in hand and a clear track in front of him, 
even though you grab the tyres early, you can look after them. That's right. You're not racing anybody. Yep. So that's actually a really important part of that story. So when we talk about ideally wanting to run them in an even stint, that's all fine and dandy, but sometimes if you do grab them early, but you're out there on your own, and you can set and regulate your own pace and look after the tyre without taking artificial pressure from somebody else, you can actually, even though you've demanded a longer stint out of the tyre, just manage it a little bit better. So he's in pretty good shape there in that regard at the moment because his pace is cracking at the moment. He looks really good. Yep. And he's done his first stop. The others that we've been talking about, including this man on screen, David Reynolds, so Tander, Van Gisbergen, Reynolds, McLaughlin, those guys, they're now committing to run out nearer that lap 25 area that I talked about in the Hino Hub in the even tyre strategy. But Courtney's in good shape in this battle. And the biggest factor of what you've just explained is controlling your own destiny. You, you can drive the car as hard as you think you can hurt the tyre in terms of right to the threshold of grip everywhere, trying to flow it really nicely. When you're with other cars, you tend to be too hard on the throttle, also too hard on the brake sometimes on the way to the corner. So when you can flow the car by yourself and minimise the damage to the tyre, you do control your own destiny, Murph. Yeah, just uh, quickly tap uh, Adrian Burgess on the shoulder. He was going to have a chat to me, but he's uh, having a conversation now with Garth Sanders. Oh, sorry, James Courtney's engineer. Just, uh, Adrian, clearly Garth looks pretty comfortable out there. You're very patient looking in the pits. I don't sort of see any action uh, at the moment. You've obviously put James Courtney through his pace and through his first pit stop. You've got to have to be patient here, though. I'm picking you want to try and run this for quite a long time. Yeah, look, you know, clearly we're in the lead, so we've, we've, we've got the cards in our hand at the moment. We want to try and split with that car that stints as equal as we can. That's a look after the tyre with, with JC. We know the car's quick, but he's a little bit bottled up behind uh, Davey earlier, so we, we run the gauntlet. We brought him in early. He's, he's pumping out some you know, green boxes on, on every lap for the last 10 laps, so we're gaining track position, but we've got to make his tyre last. It'll lead you to it. Down the inside goes Van Gisbergen. Gets it done at turn one. We're just talking to Adrian Burgess. He was talking about Garth, and then he was talking about the speed that James Courtney has put on since that early stop. Finally, Van Gisbergen in a position at turn one to get that move made. No contact, no drama. And Garth Tander now to settle down and get himself back into a rhythm behind Van Gisbergen. Dave Reynolds is right in yeah. behind also. If you look in the other direction, he's all over them. He's right there. So do they react now, the Holden Racing team, on their 20th lap? They can run a little bit longer. There's a bit of flexibility to do that. Here's the replay from the Coats Hire Chopper Cam. She did it pretty easy. Garth gave him the space. He offered it up, but he'd left more than a car width on the inside. Here's the view from onboard car number 97. Braked considerably later, and then Garth knew it, spotted it in the mirror, it gave him tons of space without taking himself out into the grey line. So that was a really nice move on both parts there. So what happens next? Do they just sit here now and get to the end of this fuel load, or do we start to see some reactions? OK, let's use this clean air, target to five more laps. There's the answer. Yeah. Well done. So it gets you pretty much to where we talked about in the Hino Hub on the green strategy. So there's turn nine. And if, if, if you think about what that really means, it's you make hay, hay while the sun shines now for both, both parties, but you've also got to think about where it puts you in the field when you come back out. Because the clear air, the thing that Courtney's got for nothing is a free kick. He got clear air. The point you made before is really important in terms of being able just to drive the car as well and as hard as you can, but not caught up in any racing. So when they come back out, they're going to come back out near Shay Davies and Jason Bright in 14th and 15th. And if you get caught up in that battle, that will hurt the tyre performance and your ultimate lap speed. Wind Cup continues to be very quick out there at the moment. Scopey, he's done that stop. Got better rubber on the car now and uh, personal best in sectors one and three. And race best performance in the middle sector of the racetrack at the moment for car number 88. There he is on screen. So he's got a big battle oh. going on here with McLaughlin and oh, that gap completely diminished. Scotty knows that he's there and he covers him off. So this is for position, it's vital. And Wind Cup's tyres are up to temperature, but for McLaughlin, he's trying to hustle it back into shape, having made that stop. 
So he's got nice, pristine grip, but the temperature and the pressure is not quite there in that tyre set for him at the moment, McLaughlin. So he's hanging on by his fingernails. And he'll have to hold him off because Van, Gis uh, sorry, Van Gisbergen and Tander, who haven't stopped, will be important in the next three or four laps as to what happens when they re-emerge and wink up whilst his tyres are warm. We'll have to have a dive. He's been very good down here at turn nine. So this is a real strategy play. Moves it over. Scott McLaughlin moves it over and he covers him. That was nice. And I was watching the front of Jamie's car and it was wriggling. So as he tried to move that car around, he was right on the absolute limit. This is coming out of turn one. And uh, Scotty covered off down there. Oh, wasn't much in it. He's got him. Nice job, Jamie. Did it at turn 11. Haven't seen too many passing moves made there, so that was very impressive. Those things have got some pace, haven't they? That's all right, honey. In your rhythm, mate. Let's look after the rubber. Look after the rubber. The voice you heard was Richard Holway. That's the corresponding garage. David Couchy on the phone to Jamie Wincup. So Scotty did everything. McLaughlin, that is, to try and make sure that he could try and keep Jamie Wincup at bay. Uh, but in the end, turn 11 was where Jamie pulled the knife and got it done. And I think because Wincup's pace is so good, this won't really hurt Scott too much either. So this is the battle. Wow, that was close. He chased him across the road and then he turned it in. And this was where Todd Kelly went in the fence yesterday. So he had to back it off, slow it down and turn it in. And there's the boys' reaction. A little clap there from Mark Dutton. And, and you like that stuff as David Reynolds now comes in where McLaughlin's just fighting as hard as you dare. But when he knew he was done, he knew he was done. He gave him the space, but not before he ran him into the dirt. <laughs> Michael Caruso in as Dave Reynolds just comes back out into the fast lane. Nick Percat being serviced in the background. Now, here's James Courtney, and we reckon he's actually going to be the effective leader based on his pace very, very fast, but again, it's diminishing returns. It's worked well for the start, but his tyres, as the stint length increases, tyre degradation here with the soft tyre this weekend is much higher than we've seen in previous years when we've used the hard tyre. Just to give a bit more understanding around that point, by doing what James did and coming in when he did, when the Holden Racing Team and Terry and his group brought him in at that point, by doing that, it's a long stint on this tyre set because, go back to the Hino Hub, James has got to get to the critical lap. He's got to get to the critical lap to fuel up and get home points. So it asks a lot of that tyre set. So that's the downside. The upside is he's regulated his own pace as Gizzy comes in now. So, and so does Tanda. So Tanda responds to the race leader effectively. And uh, let's have a look at this rejoin when they get the job done. So let's focus on both teams, then see where they pop out. But James is in pretty good shape. Slightly past the marks there for Tanda as he pulled up. It's about three to four hundred mil past those yellow wheel indicators. No drama for fuel hose length, so that's a minimal impact on the stop. And what happens here? Can he get out? There goes Courtney, gone. Miles. Can he get out? Can he get out? Oh! There's going to be drama there. It's an unsafe release. There will be a penalty applied, I would think, for Van Gisbergen. Yeah, there's a couple of other little peripheral rules around that, though. There can be contact. It's just how much. But let's focus on this. We'll get back to the rule bit in a minute. But, yeah, that one was go that's going to be one that's a nail-biter, and it's on between these two on the run to turn two. So the interesting thing for me, Courtney's down the road by a mile. Well, and the other interesting thing for me was because Tanner came in behind Van Gisbergen, he's either done two things. He's had less fuel or they've got better economy. So there's a couple of things that we'll work out for you as to how much they put in car 97 and car 2 in terms of fuel consumption. And there's Courtney. That's the gap that he's got. He's way down in turn 9. So the undercutters work. But remember that... They're the two guys that have been battling for the lead. The undercuts work for them. There's Roland Dane going and making his thoughts. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. 
Do you? Okay, so 65 litres goes in car two. And 72 litres for 97. So that's the difference in the stop. So I've gone to the ops manual while you were just going through the fuel numbers there and just confirmed in my own mind that uh, it's acceptable for there to be contact after the release, provided that it's behind the rear wheels. I reckon yes. that's a tick. No significant damage to either car. Tick. And the contact is approximate front to rear and not side to side. That's the question mark. Yeah. So two of the three. And uh, the good news is we're not in race control, so we don't have to sort that that's one out. Right. Well, it's under investigation. So that, listen, they're only a couple of metres from where we are at the moment. <laughs> and and Roland, <laughs> Roland's giving the boys a tune up to you. <laughs> as is his want. And uh, so they will all be deep in the operations manual at the moment uh, next door. And uh, so that's going to be an interesting one. So they're looking at it. They're looking at it. So it's point three of those little caveats that I just read out of the, yeah, you can do it if, but, and maybe. It's the maybe that might trip them over. We'll just grab uh, quickly a comment from Adrian Burgess about that. I know you're shaking your head looking at it, and uh, you've got your point of view, I'm sure. Well, yeah. Oh, for me, it's fairly clear, but yeah. yeah. Look, you want to see a good race on the circuit, but uh, it's also a race in the pit lane. We, we knew what fuel we were going to put in. They put in a little, a little bit longer. They knew we were only two or three seconds behind them on track, so they knew we were going to be on top of them in the pit lane. And this is, uh, you know, your fuel you put in. Knowing where each other is in P lane, it's all part of the strategy, it's all part of the game. So they obviously took a, a gamble releasing it, or they should have saw us come in and released him early. But anyway, we'll let uh, Boggs and those guys uh, make this call. Thanks, mate. And I can tell you guys that um, just a moment ago, Roland had a discussion with Frank Adamson here in the pit lane, and I walked in on the end of it, so I couldn't tell you what was said, but it looked like a, a plea, more or less, from Roland, I guess, not for calm, perhaps, or just to look into it carefully, perhaps. Uh, but Frank kind of raised his hand and said, hey, it's out of my hands. It's being looked at by race control. A fair bit of damage on the back of Lee Holdsworth's car there as well. So Cam Waters is actually the lead of the race. Plenty of things to talk about, though. And then in second place, we've got Fabian Coulthard. And then the first of the cars in the queue that stopped is James Courtney. Position number three from Shane Van Gisbergen, then Garth, uh, Garth Pander, and now Cam Waters has actually come uh, into the pit lane, to, even as I rattle his name off. So, so there can be some contact, as I rattled through before. It's the nose to tail versus the side to side that might trip over Red Bull Racing. Ooh, bonnet doesn't look too flash on Fabian Coulthard's car, does it? A lot of damage to many of the cars at the front there, and that all comes from, there you go, same thing on Cam Waters Falcon. And that all comes from the concertina at turn yeah, two and three in. normally. And okay. the number so that we're going to give to go, is 12.4 seconds. seconds now. Courtney go, leads go. Ben Gisbergen, go, go, go. remembering that he stopped early and those tyres will be degrading. But he's got track position and that's king. So I think what's helped him is the clear air running. He regulated his own pace, and the blokes that he was racing were duking on that hard, they're knocking themselves senseless and went slower. That's it in a nutshell. And so that margin that he's got of 12 seconds, even though it is going to continue to diminish, he's got to get fair way, though, doesn't he, Scapey? The critical lap, it depends on your fuel burn. It's going to get you to about lap 38. No breach. No breach is the determination from race control. Car number 97 pit stop. So there you go. You were right. I thought there would have been a breach. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I was a good guesser. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at the reaction from the boys. You can see Adrian Burgess there. <laughs> Hello, ATB. How are you, mate? I know how he is. Uh, incidentally, I um, was having a chat earlier. I bumped in down there. An, an old colleague that he used to race against uh, in the UK is here this weekend visiting Dick Bennett's from West Surrey Racing, who formerly ran Mika Hakkinen, Nett and Senna. Jonathan Palmer, Rubens Barrichello, a whole bunch of superstars, runs in the British Touring Car Championship. I think picked up two of the three titles uh, this year. 
he's an observer this weekend, wandering around, understanding more about the supercars business with his family. And so it was nice to see Dick back in the paddock. Haven't seen him for quite some time, and he was renewing old acquaintances. And Alex Somerset came running out of the garage to say good day. Here we go with Will Davison down the inside. Chaz Mostert, that's a nice clean move. And Chaz is going to argue the case. So on board now, co-tire chopper cam. And when you're on the inside for turn two, it's a pretty good place to be. So how does this get resolved? Like that, like that. And so good decision by uh, Will just to roll out of that one at the key moment. The bit that we haven't explained is not just in the undercut for Courtney, is that he only put 42 litres on. Yeah, he's got to sit still for longer. So he's basically got 20 litres less than Tanda and 30 litres less than Van Gisbergen. He's going to get him back here. So Will gets back down the inside here at uh, turn eight, making a hot, hard afternoon hotter and harder for Chaz. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so as we described in yesterday's coverage, uh, there's a bit more to play in the storytelling for how this is. So right now, the cards favour James Courtney. They've played them a certain way. The roads tend to converge when they get back to their second stop in the sequence of the 250k race. That's the tantalising prospect to come, remembering that the critical lap is in and around lap 37, 8, 9, thereabouts. So Courtney's got 10.9 seconds now, so no surprise. Shane Van Gisbergen is peeling that time away. And just go through that again, Mark, in terms of what the, the net position is, because you've got to understand how long they stand still now for the next load of fuel to understand what it means. Let me do a bit of forecasting, and you can see our United Race predictor up on screen there as Scopey explains a bit more of the tail. Yeah, so it's not just the undercut in terms of the track position and the way that Courtney's pace has worked for him. It's a lot about the fuel added at the stop. So Courtney's put 42 litres on, Van Gisbergen 72 litres, Tander 64 litres. So he's 20 litres less than his teammate Tander and 30 litres less than Van Gisbergen. So he will have to stop for longer later on. At the moment, we, we reckon there's about an eight second difference between the cars. And he's got uh, ten and a half seconds in hand at the moment. So in real terms, James only got two and a half seconds on Gizzy. That's right. So the pace that he's grabbing him at the moment, that's going to be key. And a little bit of controversy for the Van Gisbergen exit from his pit stop with Garth Tander and our officials have come back and determined no breach for Shane Van Gisbergen. So they're pressing on. Moffat down the inside of Cam Waters at the top of the hill at Turn 8. That's the top of Dawn Fraser Avenue. And he makes that move stick. He's on board now with James. Just very close to bumping Cam there. Gets it done. He races very well, James Moffat. He's aggressive. He positions the car well. And this is... A little bit of vision that we had from before with Chaz Mostert, who clips those tyres heavily. In fact, that's where he hit yesterday. We missed that in the coverage. We covered it a little bit earlier, but he hit those tyres on the last lap. He did a lot of damage to the front of the Super Chief Falcon on board from the back of Chaz. Now, looking back toward Will Davison. Will gets up the inside. Turn eight. Have a look at the camber off that corner. It's like a magnet, that fence on the right hand side. I've seen so many guys in the wall there over the years. And have a look at the damage also at the back of the BOC Commodore and Jason Bright last weekend for Jason with Brad Jones Racing. That apron that they're trying to tear off that's uh, not really made like of a of material. Off. Yeah, it's not enjoying it. Um, that's part of a loosely described diffuser. You see them in open wheel racing. Part of the aero kit in the car does actually contribute to the overall aero balance of the car. Not that this is a particularly aero circuit, but you just don't want those bits hanging off. Betty Flamenco, the final race of the year. You've had a terrific qualifying session, and if I know you well, I'm sure you've got excitement, but also nerves with David Reynolds. You know what? I, I do have nerves, but they're not really that bad. We've proved a point. We've proved in our rookie year that we can get up there and 
Dave's out there doing what Dave does best, and that is hopefully be in the top ten. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of laps to go, but at the moment doing a sensational job. Oh, look, there he is. It's a long race, but you know what? I think he's comfortable. He's in his zone, and he'll do well. Thanks, Betty, and we uh, wish you all the best for today. Thank you. They have done a very good job with that car through the course of the year. Massive ch uh, structural changes, changes within the Erebus group to go to a customer relationship with Walkinshaw and move those cars further towards the pointy end as the year has gone on. Dave Reynolds drives the cars very well. He's very good on street circuits, remembering he was in contention to win the championship last year. He's a young guy that gets every little bit of performance from whatever he drives. As we pick up through turn nine, ten. Difficult little corner, that corner off the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue. It's a weird braking area, a lot of damage to the right-hand front for Scott Pye, but it's a weird corner. It's very slow. It's the slowest corner on the, on the circuit, only 60K and trying to get the car stopped over the rise and make the brake modulation nice and get the car to the inside clipping point, to the apex. One of the more difficult, and from a driver's perspective, a technique corner that you've got to do a really nice job with the brake modulation to make it work. There must have been more nonsense in the opening couple of corners than the eye. Because <laughs> every car that we've looked at so far needs a nose job. So they've all got bonnets and bumper bars and mud guards and so the back third of the pack or thereabouts has all gone down there and they've all tried to aim for the same postcode and only one can fit and everybody else has got some form of damage. Just an amazing number of cars that we focused on and then when you look at the detail you go, oh yeah, that doesn't look too good. So they're spending a bit of money in the last day, just making sure that uh, that last bit of the budget is spent for calendar 2016. But it's a hard place on cars, isn't it, oh, Neil? Yeah. You know, it's it's a, a very demanding racetrack. There's another one with yeah, speaking of which, the Worth sign caved in on the front of the Sharp Falcon for Fabian. I rest my case, Your Honour. Yeah. <laughs> now nine seconds is the gap between first and second. And talked about there being about eight seconds different in fuel so now van gisbergen is critically close theoretically to james courtney now this is all fine and dandy we kind of played this game yesterday when we were in the well me particularly riding off shane van gisbergen and then out came the safety car and the universe changed and the planet spun the other way so you've got to be a little bit careful <laughs> because things change around here very quickly speaking of quickly Let's enjoy a fast lap of this location, Sydney Olympic Park. Let's ride with the Falcon. Okay, mate, give that a jump and help the guard lap. Yeah, sorry, I'm just asking whether that change helps the car. Yeah, definitely. Bad. I'm changing the James Courtney in control of the race, 8.1 seconds now. So that strategic advantage that he had by undercutting, coming in early, getting on those tyres, making some gain, 
is now beginning to evaporate together with the fact that they, they short fueled that car. And so now he's theoretically in the grasp of Shane Van Gisbergen, who's exactly 8.2 seconds behind. It's interesting to look at that lap of Scott Pye under assault from uh, Craig Lowndes and uh, Lowndes has now moved up to 15th after getting past Scotty. He's chasing Scott McLaughlin in this championship battle. It came in with nine points difference between them as we look at Van Gisbergen here. So uh, that's looking strongly in favour of uh, Scotty McLaughlin at the moment. Yeah, the interesting thing, I went back and looked at some Lowndes stats. scopey has been second or fourth for the last 11 years in a row. <laughs> Loud. No, really? 11 years, second or four, that's crazy. Thanks to Aaron Noonan for the numbers. And boys, uh, we just uh, did that lap with Fabian Coulthard. We heard him talking about the change. Phil Keed asked Fabian, how's that change? And they actually lowered the rear of the car. The rear instability in it was uh, becoming a bit of an issue. They've run out of rear roll bar adjustment too in the way that Fabian wanted to be able to adjust the car. So they've made a right height change. It's slightly better. And also, incidentally, they've put 100 litres of fuel in that car. So he's got a, around a 10 second stop for his last run. To Yes, it's trying to play a, a very different strategy to help the cause at the back end of the race. This one's getting interesting. So now we've got Wincup. Just been watching him trending in the last several laps because he's making very good pace out there at the moment and playing himself into a very strong potential podium position. He's hunting David Reynolds, and uh, these fellas just on 14 seconds from the lead at the moment. There's nothing between them, as you can see, at turn 11. It was a last-minute lunge, wasn't it, from Lowndes down the inside. We were on board there with Scott Pye. Lowndes currently in 15th in that battle for third in the championship as you were relaying that the number is now 54 points the way they sit. So McLaughlin currently 6th, Lowndes 15th. And there's Lowndes now up and behind. Last year's champion. Mark Winterbottom, who was crowned here on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. Local boy, he and James Courtney, a couple of young Sydney lads. So Courtney leads from Van Gisbergen, Tander, Reynolds, Winkup, McLaughlin, Slade, Perkat, Caruso, and Todd Kelly. See, Lowndes is another of the cars that's um, in the nose job brigade, so that car's all been up around the bonnet and around the front of, as well, like a bunch of other cars out there thing will be if we cup can clear David Reynolds then he's going to become a threat to Garth Panda yes oh Shay Davies has a little lock up and runs wide down there that car's also sporting some damage on the front and that was awkward for Dave Reynolds to miss oh that's awkward that more than awkward well you could lose you know vulnerable to losing the spot here look at Jamie gets up on the outside of him we're in replay here. This is the run to turn two. So those little disturbances like that can completely change the spectrum of the race at the click of a finger. And it changes your rhythm. You know, you've got a, a feel for where your strengths are and weaknesses when you're in a battle like that with Wing Cup. And then a little glitch like that makes you vulnerable. He had to cover, he moved it over to the left, he braked very deep. Jamie looked like he was going to go by him before turn two. He was able to maintain that spot. So Reynolds holding on to position four at the moment, but very aggressive Jamie Winkup in behind. Just heard Courtney talking a moment ago on the radio, on my spy radio, scoping about the rear balances. Lowndes thinks about being down the inside of Mark Winterbottom, but it didn't totally materialise. So that long stint that I talked about on this tyre set to get to the critical lap, which we're not far from it as Bright goes off the VOC entry at nine. Uh, so back end of the stint for Courtney's really hurting now on the soft tyre. They'll be right down in their tread depth. Here he is. And uh, he'd be trying to eke every last bit of performance out at the moment, but on corrected Van Gisbergen is actually better position than him now, even though James has got 4.8 seconds, but the last couple of laps, he's cliff edged a little bit in his lap speed. So, so that was, talk, sorry, mate. Sorry, that was a bad lap, Neil. Somewhere there, that's a 30.3 versus a 28.8. 
foot. Well, he's complaining about the rear, so I reckon he's, it's unstable. It's cost him somewhere. He's made a little mistake as a result of it. So four and a half seconds is the gap now. So those tyres on the back of that car are shot. Gary Rogers, we saw you on the grid with the big boot for, big Scotty boot. for Scott McLaughlin, but we know it is an emotional weekend for you and, and the final race with him. Well, it's been great. We're really not sure who gave who the boot, whether we gave him the boot or he gave us the boot. But anyway, we're sort of, look, we're great friends. We had a great relationship. He did a fantastic job. And look, I wish him well, but let me tell you right now, I'm going to like him a lot less if he starts to beat us. It's, it's a competition. Absolutely a competition. But right now, the important thing for him is getting that third position in the championship. And he, at the moment, is doing very well to get that. Yes, but don't, as we always say, mate, you know the rules. We've got a way to go yet, but we are going very well and we'll continue to keep that cool. Hopefully we'll get what we want. How important is that for you? Oh, look, it's very important for the team, really. I mean, look, I'm only part of what we do. It's all the team, there's a sponsor group, there's a lot of fans, and, you know, for me it's good, but... Right, thank you, Gary. He's a good lad, great supporter of the industry, Gary Rogers, and there's his man on screen. Spoke to him about not long ago and he's been missing in action several race meetings in the recent past and he's been back into the workshop and uh, had a little bit of surgery and I mentioned it yesterday and he's uh, back in good health now and a big and very important weekend for him to farewell his charge in Scotty McLaughlin and then where's James Moffat at the moment he's uh, in 16 so about midfield there for James as well first of the cars to make the uh, uh, second and final stop was uh, car 15 for my recollection. Uh, Todd Rick Kelly, sorry, was in the lane. He was there for quite a long time because his first stop, he only put 30 litres in the car, so he had around 29 seconds of fuel to put in, so he's now fueled to the finish, and they also had a green set of tyres to throw on car 15. Thanks for the update, Greg. That'll make that... Uh, long uh, stint. Oh, so exactly the same, you stole the words. And that'll be running on fumes at the back end of that stint as well. Jason Bright's also being shown blue flags at the moment, which means he's got to respect those that are better positioned behind him and give them some space. Gary Rogers looked a bit emotional then, Crompo, with the prospect of number one losing Scott McLaughlin and number two finishing, hopefully, third in the championship. He's done a superb job all year. The team's been very good. And we just talked to Aaron Noonan about it. We think it's Gary Rogers as a team. Best performance in the championship since Garth Tander way back in 2000. So that's a very good job by an outfit that is very well run. And they punch above their weight. Year 2000 was a Bathurst winning year for them with Garth Tander and Jason Barguana. This is a great battle. Oh, oh trouble, big, big trouble crash. here for Coulthard. They've plucked the wing off the car. He's slammed into Cam Waters. It's turn eight again that creates trauma at Sydney Olympic Park. Big damage on the back of that car. And that is going to KO both these vehicles. So do they get them back and therefore we don't have the safety car and how much debris is on the road there? So, unfortunately for Coulthard, nowhere to go in all that. So, they're bringing it into the shed. More people can work on the car. They might get that vehicle back out, maybe. But the Waters car, that's going to be parked up. And Lee's car looks pretty second-hand. So, we are going to see a big flurry of action here because we're right at the point now of taking this safety car, taking the stop, the critical stop to fuel to get home. That thing of cams looks awful, doesn't it? So uh, we were about to remark on this wonderful battle going on between Mark Winterbottom and Craig Lowes, and then all of a sudden it all broke loose at turn eight. So these guys have been in big combat in the recent past. Both of them down the order in 13th and 14th. And sadly for Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske, big damage. Here's James. So track position, he got away. This is actually a get out of jail free for him. This equalizes strategy now. But remember, they've got to put more fuel in this car. 22 requires more stationary time to get it full than car number 97. But he had some margin in hand. Okay, mate, you're going to be about 28 seconds worth of fuel or just hit the 16 second mark? Yeah, 28 seconds worth of fuel. 28 seconds on. 
3.75 litres per second, the refuel rate. And there's a driver on Nick Perkins' car too. He actually came in with a puncture. And in the meantime, as Fabian Coulthard came into the pits to drive into his garage, he grabbed the LDM gun that was sitting here on the right-hand side. And they had a, a massive leak going on there from the nitrogen cylinder. The boom actually got pulled right round in front of them. And they had to quickly pull the boom back as, as Nick was coming in to put fuel in the car for his final stop, but also rectify that puncture. So plenty of action going down here. The LDM crew did a very, very good job to manage that situation. That's a, that's a hard shot. shot. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's uh, a metallic object on the road means that we will see a safety car. That's oh. highly dangerous. Highly dangerous. And that does trigger the safety car. So I, I, I imagine that there was going to be enough debris that that would be the case when you see metallic objects in particular. And now they respond. So I wonder what they were going to do with Gizzy. They clearly responded at the Holden Racing Team. Now, will that make Wing Cup double stack here? It will. Yeah, there he is. That's him in the background on the left of frame. So there's Tander, and the car that you could see behind was Wincup. He'll go past in a minute and park up. So Gizzy's about to arrive. There's Jamie, and Gizzy's in the box. So Jamie's going to have to wait. No choice here. It's the lesser of the two evils. Mate, as soon as you drop, move forward. We've got the other car right behind you, OK? I've got no idea on the time, please. That's murdered Wincup. Five seconds left, I reckon. Clear. I would have separated the strategy clear. there because clear. HRT did that. Clear. They took clear. the early option Cold for side, Courtney. Side, right. There's so a gap from Van Gisbergen to Tanda. Yeah, yeah, and where's Gizzy versus James? And he's in front of him. He got that extra run. Yeah, there we are. Triple eight behind us, so let's set for triple eight. Might be long, mate, but it's a busy pit lane, OK? It's a busy pit lane. Get out. Yes, he does. Gets out in front of Michael Caruso. Jamie Winkup, but that has hurt. We'll give you the numbers whilst these pit stops are being finished off. Craig Lance, so everyone feeling for the finish. Once this settles, there's James Moffat coming out. Merge, merge on, merge on. And does he merge? Yes, he does, in behind Heimgartner. Again, another car there with front damage, as Neil was saying before. It's a big club. <laughs> it certainly is. So driver's been cautioned about turn eight because of what we're seeing here on the Shannon's replay. That is big contact, Cam Waters hard into the concrete wall down there and then as he tries to pluck it out there's nowhere to go for Fabian Coulthard and so Cam he can't see behind he gets reversed pulls it off the wall and then for Fabian big contact plucks the rear wing off it big damage to the right rear and then leaves junk all over the road and then the concern there is that it can flick up and uh, get across the fence Nasty scenes at Sydney Olympic Park. As always, there's a lot going on in the supercar competition. 33 laps remaining. In accordance with the probabilities that we talk about, safety car out again. That was a very high prop here. That uh, looks like broken bits of a uh, curbing that's let go down there on the... Is that the pit lane entry, Scafi? I think it is, but I didn't know whether it was the inside kerb of the actual pit lane or the kerb on the racetrack because they've been running over that kerb so aggressively at turn 13. So we just need to see a little bit further back. And it's broken that concrete out because they've been running the cars up over the footpath on the inside of the pit lane entry rather than the actual racetrack. So that concrete has come out and it's then been pushed towards the actual apex curb at turn 13. This is the rundown Australia Avenue in this famous sporting precinct. Now final time at Sydney Olympic Park, ANZ Stadium. Back to your left. This amazing run down the hill. Big shout out to all our volunteers and officials who've worked again 
tirelessly in season 2016. Part of the car club and cam system of volunteers. So thank you very much for all your efforts. We couldn't have a show like we put on without you. Well done. Scape, you have just had a word to Chris O'Toole, and it sounds like this car has quite a significant amount of damage in it. It'll be hard, in his words, to get it in the truck, let alone repair. Cam Waters, I feel for you. Uh, you're pretty wound up about this. What happened? Um, yeah, I was catching the group in front of me, going all good, and then um, I put the inside curb at turn eight. Pulled the front wheels off the ground and fired me straight in the fence. So, um, yeah, absolutely gutted for the team and all the sponsors. We're going OK. And, um, yeah, I didn't want to finish the year like this, but um, yeah, we'll come back next year stronger. The medical team dropped by just to double check on your year OK? Yeah, no, I'm all fine. Just um, just super disappointed. So, um, you know, what you knew about us racing, I guess. We're going OK until then, but um, yeah, next year will be good. We'll go ahead to 2017, mate. Thanks, man. Fabian Coulthard still in the car. Huge amount of damage to the rear of your car. Just an innocent one in that, in that situation. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, wrong place, wrong time for me. You know, the yellow just came out just as I was sort of mid-corner, and by that stage I've already committed, and Cam's already reversing out, and I pretty much had no, nowhere to go. But, you know, after uh, the three bad events I've had, you know, Darwin, uh, this one, Gold Coast, hopefully all the gremlins are done and I can come back and attack hard for 2017. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you next year. Thanks, Fabian. Thank you. So, a big moment right here. Okay, Turn eight. They reposition cars nine and 22 need to reverse uh, positions. So nine there's some conjecture there between Dave Reynolds and James Courtney as to who got out to the control line after that stop. So they're moving now. Dave Reynolds back behind. So always the controversy of those sorts of stops. The safety car out. The hectic pit lane activity. Dave Reynolds should be in front of car 22. That's the verdict. So they're moving those cars around on track to ensure that the, com the complete stop then is done properly and the track position is observed. And guys, I uh, just saw that happening. I was in Erebus at the time and Ellison Devane was uh, quite animated about the situation. And uh, as far as they were concerned, they looked at it and saw it on the screen, the, the camera was actually showing it at the time, and David Reynolds arrived at the safety car lock control line down the end of, or at, past the end of the pit lane before 22. So they sent an email to race control to confirm it, and that has actually been verified. So 22 has been put behind nine because he passed him after David Reynolds had already got to the control line. Yep, here it is. Here's the replay. Yes, so that's Dave on the right. James Courtney on the left, one was coming out of the pit, one was at full race speed. So sometimes they're hard to adjudicate on when there's such a disparity in exit speed. And this is the moment that brought out the safety car. Cam Waters got too much of the inside kerb, fired into the right-hand fence. He backs it back and Fabian Coulthard arrived. It's pulled the right-hand rear out of the DJR team Penske Falcon. Watch this, he just backs it back. There's a yellow flag out, but Fabian's already too deep. And bang, huge contact for the Sharp Falcon. And have a look at the damage mm. on Cam Waters' Stoker. car. Yeah. And we're, we're very fortunate that that stuff didn't end up making it to the wrong side of the safety fence down there. And right front corner of that car just completely torn apart, limped back into the lane. Every corner of that car. It's been a very difficult weekend. So, so there we are. Beautiful overhead shot from the coat tire chopper cam of Sydney Olympic Park. Coming up to the full stop, and what's been uh, a wonderful venue for supercars. It's been a real privilege for the category to be able to race at a venue like this. Beautiful facility, and uh, continues to expand and grow. There's retail and there's a lot of business administration and a lot of housing going in and around this area as well. We're just roughly, as the crow flies, about 15 kilometres to the west of the Sydney CBD and there's been a huge amount of development over here. Incredible to think that we've transited 16 years since the yeah, Sydney Olympics. Yeah. And boys, uh, earlier on, Car 15 was the first car to come in and get the second stop, probably just after the critical lap. 
and unfortunately uh, they decided they needed to bring him in again. It was a bit too early, so he has actually been into the lane for a third time, has Rick Kelly, and they put another 10 to 15 litres in that car. They were concerned it wasn't getting to the finish, so I'm not quite sure uh, why they did stop him in the first place, but that yeah. extra stop has very much hurt car 15's day. When he came in, and then you re yeah. reiterated the report, Murphy. Well, Mark, I was looking Mark, at the critical yeah. lap as well, yeah. going, wow. We looked at each other, and, that, and I think made the remark, but it'll be running on fumes at the end, so they, that was clearly a, a view held in the Nissan Motorsport garage as well. So the safety car's now disappeared, the lights are out, field control is being managed by car is in pit lane. Shane Van Gisbergen. And we're into it once again, racing once more, 31 laps remaining. Now make that 30 as they cross the control line. Van Gisbergen trying to make some temperature. He's got Tander behind in second spot, just as he was yesterday. Then it's Reynolds. They've all got the weave on. The gauntlet covers down the inside just to make sure that Tim Slade doesn't get too racy. Oh, down the inside comes Will Davison on Todd Kelly. They continue their battle up towards turn two now. So out of the race, Coulthard and Waters. And then earlier, we had problems for Wood and for Blanchard. So 22 cars remaining in the field. All fueled to the finish. 30 lap sprint on a very, very tough layout. One of the hardest racetracks on our tour. And that fast right, left approach for turn six and seven off turn five and then up to the top of the hill where this is the spot Cam Waters made the mistake. We used to talk a lot more about safety cars breeding, safety cars and the quality of the field and the quality of the cars has continued to rise year on year. We don't see it as much anymore but there's still that period when they get going once again on cooler tyres where the temps and pressures have dropped and we've got a problem here for Moffat has held for a sec to make sure it wasn't McLaughlin, but James Moffat's been turned, so that really goes to the point when you put the cars back together again. G10 has took. Are you serious? He has taken some ground Big time. off Van Gisbergen in the last part of that lap. I think Shane must have made a, a mistake there because he was about a second up the road. Tander right in behind Shane Van Gisbergen now. Don't worry about this battle because. Dave Reynolds and James Courtney aren't out of it either. When you bring the cars back together again and you take a bit of temp and pressure out of the tyres, you raise the possibility of there being trouble. So we're just trying to work out what's going on here with James Moffat. Yeah, he did get tagged by Scotty Pye. And around he goes. And so we heard a little bit of an exchange in the background there from James Moffat before, who sounded animated. but. Our attention is focused on the front at the moment because Garth Tander was very close to the back of Shane Van Gisbergen in that last lap. They're starting to move further to the left at turn eight now. They're moving the right side of the car to about the apex point. Ooh. Car 17's just been given a pit lane drive through penalty for his role in car 34's turnaround. So that's Scotty Pye, PLP for his trouble. Nice pass there by Jamie Wink up down the inside, turn nine on Tim Slade. So that double stacking for Wink up, that did hurt, but he's back to sixth. The next one in line is Scott McLaughlin. Looks like the circuit's having a bit of a break up there at the final corner. It, it is. I looked at it on one of our, before we came up to the start of the race, I looked at it on one of the uh, closed circuit cameras that we've got. And uh, yeah, there are one or two bits starting to come adrift. So 28 laps remaining. It's got to keep our fingers crossed that it all hangs in there to the end. It, it won't matter tomorrow for the slow commute in and around Sydney, but it will matter for the remaining 28 laps in supercar racing. So the gap has now just gone out to about half a second again. So Van Gisbergen's just normalised things got back under control. Now James Moffat has gone down the runoff area at turn nine. That's not good. So the pit lane drive through penalty has been completed by the way for Scott Pye. Last weekend for him, Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske. Different livery on that car this weekend with WM Waste Management joining the group. That's a cool shot. Really illustrated. Bright has also given that Team BOC car a tweak. Have a look at it. It's hit the fence. It's hit the wall. Big damage on the rear. He's out of business. Hasn't been a good weekend for... Safety and the safety car, car again. Safety car scramble, safety car scramble. We've got a 
Well, we're into the last corner, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're into the mistake zone of the weekend. People are tired, cars are worn. Chris Clark, team manager for Brad Jones Racing and the team Freightliner outfit down there. So Bright's had four podiums here, including a pole. And uh, his departure from the team sadly hasn't gone to plan. Brad Jones can feel the pain in his wallet. And they won't want to finish like this. No. Jason Bright, who won the first race for Brad Jones racing at Barbagello. He just got a little wide. We saw Craig Lowndes have a monster crash here a couple of years ago. It's a fast approach, roughly 210k, back to 165k. And he just got caught out in the marbles. Had nowhere to go. Made pretty heavy contact with that right wall. And that car is parked down in the escape road at turn six. So an unfortunate end to the weekend for Jason Bright. So Jason Bright, who's done such a great job over the years for Brad Jones Racing. And it's always bad when you see the reaction, the look on Brad Jones' face, and the, I'm sure despondent Jason Bright parked down there in the escape road because, again, for both guys, they would have liked to have finished the weekend and their relationship together on a much higher note. And there's Brad, who, in conjunction with his brother, operates a business from Albury. It's Brad's son, Macaulay. And have a look at the damage to car eight. There's a pretty sizable amount of right rear damage, which it sort of slid at the end. When it got wide, it made contact with the right rear before it then fanned the front back in. The bit that we don't get to see in the roles that we embark on now in the industry is we pop up every couple of weeks and enjoy the quality of the race and get all excited about it. The gap in the middle is just sheer hard work by many men and women at these teams and it's relentless and that's the reason for the pained look on their faces in the garage i mean i made a quip about the financials but that's only part of it it's actually the application of the labor and the sheer dedication they present these vehicles as though it's a motor show when they do come back and uh, when you see them torn up and all that damage and consider how much time effort and energy has gone into presenting them and racing them like they do that's the reason why it hurts so. Brad Jones, unfortunately, I've had to have two really tough conversations with you today, one in the Dunlop series and one today. I know that's not how you would want to end your season. No, you know, it's been a long, hard year and it's, um, it's nice to at least finish, especially with Bridie. I felt that, you know, it's his last race with us and it would have been really nice to, uh, to get a bit of a result, but it was pretty tough right from the outset today with him. And, uh, you know, it's really unfortunate, but motor racing is that sort of business. So... We've got um, plenty of time to regroup before we get to the next one. And, uh, you know, it's a bit sad to finish this way, but there's not much we can do about it now. Macaulay Jones just came and put his arm around you. I know that must be a, a bit of a special touch for you. Yeah, I, you know, he's just going through the pain of the whole thing as well. And, and um, you know, it's just a, it's a hard sport. You know, it, it's just tough. And, and um, you know, it's always nice to have family around. So he gets it as good as anyone. Thanks, Brad. Have a nice break. Thank you. I am going to send an invoice to Bradley for damaging the Toyota 86 racing sign down there, however. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be happy about that. <laughs> Here's McCauley. Dunlop Series competitor. He did a mighty job at Bathurst this really year. Job. Both you and I uh, have had conversation with him about that and uh, great performance. So second time today, Lexus RCF safety car has got control of the universe. And so that gives Garth Tander another reprieve. It means that nobody's having to go through the whole fuel save process. Uh, that's good, means they can race hard to the end. These boys are well worn out now. So 26 laps of racing remaining when we get going, assuming that that's in the not too distant future, it'll be 25 odd laps. It's still a long way to, to go. This will be helping the preservation of the soft tyre a little bit. All Dunlop soft tyre weekend. Shane Van Gisbergen's had success on the streets of Sydney previously, so he's well positioned to convert P1 at the moment, champion elect. Tander with a second yesterday. And David Reynolds has also been on the podium here before as well. So those guys know what it's about to get a car home clean, fast and straight at this location.
And unfortunately, the 23 of Michael Crusoe, they're not innocent. Ultima has just had to come to the lane. He was sitting in eighth position. Uh, the alternator has failed on that car, so the boys bought it in. They had to throw the battery, as you can see, the extra battery going in there to be plugged into the system to hopefully get Michael to the finish of this race. But that's a disappointing run for him, considering he was up there in the top 10. And it's a lithium braille battery that's a control supply component in these cars. and. Uh... So uh, they're nice and light. And the problem is when the alternator's not working and there's no charge mechanism there, you're basically draining out the energy in that battery. So they've stuck the other one. They've got quick couplings in there to be able to just whack them straight in and keep them going. But uh, that might also mean he's got to turn off ancillaries, yes. which can sometimes cool include suits. cool suits. <laughs> you're good at taking the words out of my mouth today. So um, that means hot. It means very hot. It'll be about 55 degrees inside the car at the moment. And after the 250 k's from yesterday and such an aggressive racetrack, violent curbs, big elevation changes, we're watching the replay of Jason Bright at Turn 5. Very hard physically, very hard on cars. I was talking to Grant McPherson this morning and after it, race yesterday and the fight back for Van Gisbergen. and they were here till midnight last night changing the transaxle and making sure they will line the cars properly and looked at them in terms of preparation to repair them and get them back to being square and nicely done again for the following day is a huge amount of work and from a driver physical standpoint this is one of the hardest places other than the Clipsal 500. Lucas Dumbrell, Nick Perkout had a sensational job in qualifying early today and you guys are sitting really nicely for this final race of the year. Yeah, I know, it's, it's ironic timing. I um, believe the best of the last. No, he's doing a great job. He, um, he had an ace qualifying session. And, uh, I suppose uh, he just kept it up in the race and um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, um, <laughs> we can uh, finish it off quite well. He did a great job yesterday as well. Small little, you know, bit lane penalty for speeding kind of took the result away, but no, um, it's, um, you know, I appreciate everything he's done. It's, uh, it is, you know, hopefully it's going to be a good send off and, you know, Nick, he's, um, he's been a massive part of the team for the last two years, so it's, um, it's uh, I, you know, I appreciate the result on the way out. Yeah, I know it's pretty emotional. You guys are good mates and um, sending him off in a good would be would be pretty good uh, good luck Alexis. thank you thanks that cheers guys and the 23 just came back to the lane they threw some more tires on it some uh, fresher tires on for michael Russo. hopefully able to make his way back through the field a little bit and also i checked in with scotty Sinclair. i said uh, because of that issue have you had to get michael to switch everything off and they confirmed that his cool suit now is an awful I've just wandered down to the Monster Energy Ford team, had a word to Tim Edwards, team boss at ProDrive, about the state of Cam Waters' car after that massive accident before. The good news is that the chassis is salvageable. The downside, he estimates approximately 50 grand repair bill. Yeah, it's painful, isn't it? And uh, that's going to be uh, time and effort back in the workshop that we spoke about before to try and get that car back. They do have some space up their sleeve now before our next race but uh, big repair Thank bill green flag once again we go racing got a note from uh, paul morris before scoby he reckons that what we saw on the track before also was the track bomb that we might be seeing not so much uh, a loaded break up of the surface so we're into it once more Van Gisbergen over Tander and then Reynolds. One, two and three. They're all bunched up. They've got good rubber condition. We've got tons of fuel and we've got 24 racing laps remaining. Dave Reynolds got caught with that restart a little bit. Van Gisbergen went, Tander went and Dave was about three car lengths back. He made some ground up down at turn one under brakes but he probably lost three or four car lengths. There's the battle for McLaughlin who's currently fifth. Craig Lowndes in 12th. And that, at the moment, for third in the championship is the last part of the story of the weekend. The story of the year. 54-point lead now for Blockland over Lowndes for P3. Mark Winterbottom had an awkward transition over the top of the turn 8 curving there a moment ago as well. And uh, it looked like that car hopped up very close to the exit fence at turn 8. So the cars are all bunched up tight once more. Again, for the second day in a row, Tander's in position number two here at the moment. So it's Red Bull Racing Australia, Holden Commodore, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Holden Racing Team Commodore, Garth Tander, Penrite Erebus, Holden Commodore, David Reynolds. 
guys. I've uh, had another opinion on what that uh, looks like down there at the last corner, all that debris that's coming up. Kevin Fitzsimmons from Dunlop is claiming that's his rubber that's being <laughs> laid down there, and that piece of that surface is grabbing. It's very, very grippy and very sticky, and it's taking rubber off. It's chunking up and then being dispersed when the cars run over it. So we've had a claim by Dunlop that that's theirs. Oh, and uh, Scott Pye down the inside of Shea Davies. Thanks, Merv, for the update. And uh, he scraped by, so it's any advance on that if you care to send us a note, folks. So we've had three different opinions so far. Track breakup, bond on the track or rubber. And here's the Reynolds restart. Lost a couple of car yeah, lengths. big gap, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so that's surprising. You've given a big advantage away there. And the rules require that you don't end up being further than five car lengths away. And here's James Moffat on the replay uh, with Shea Davies as well. And that's at turn eight where we've seen plenty of trouble so far this weekend and I think they come out the other side of that cleanly just this is big dive very big dive by wing cup beautiful braking he's been very good there all weekend hasn't he that's on the inside of McLaughlin position five but we go back and look at Fabian Coulthard's car they've resurrected that having trouble uh, on the go jacks i understand getting that car there's the go jack under it there it got caught in the gutter so now they've got themselves sorted uh, but that was a live picture we saw before of jamie wincup moving up on scotty mclaughlin and grabbing fifth position so keep an eye on wincup because before these recent safety car interventions car number 88 has been very quick as well so next in his gun sights will be james courtney we go on board now with jamie this is the run down to ig buried it in there deep didn't he and he got by, he pulled it up nicely. So that was uh, pretty easily done on a cold or cooler tire. There you go. Ooh, Courtney's very close to the back of uh, David Reynolds as well. So there's the gap that you can see between Wincup and, and Courtney. And Courtney's working pretty hard on the back of David Reynolds at the moment. This is going to get gonna a bit sticky. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> down and put the feet up and just watch a bit of wild car racing now to the back end of the championship. Now that's good news. Well done Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske to get the sharp entry back out on the racetrack once again. Handy teamwork to be able to get that car mobile and points. Important to be able to grab points to be classified as a finisher. Tanner looks better in this phase, doesn't he? On his cold tyre restart. I keep saying cold. You know what I mean. Cooler. They made a change in the stop to sharpen that up. Remembering that with the soft tyre over the course of the weekend, there'll be a lot more rubber down now, a bit more cloud cover. And, and Tanda mentioned that earlier in the weekend as well, and the way their car reacts to that. So I think it, as it just cools out a little bit now and you, you see some shadows and a little bit more cloud cover, he may well be stronger. Their cars have been sensitive to that. And James is having a good long hard think about putting a move on Reynolds here at the moment. And Winkup also with nothing to lose now. Neil, he was quite despondent yesterday. He's worked very hard through the course of the year. He won the race, he did everything he could possibly do, and he's right up in behind now. Winkup, second in the championship, just over 20 laps remaining, and he will throw everything at these HRT cars. This is just a sprint race now. No strategy, no mathematics to consider. It's driver versus driver, team versus team, car versus car. And it's Van Gisberg and Tanda, Reynolds, Courtney and Wincup. And then not far adrift, it's McLaughlin, Slade, Davison. He's right with him. This is where we saw strength from Wincup on the previous lap. He makes a dive. He's got the thing teetering. He's up there. Courtney won't yield. Remember yesterday, Courtney made life very, very difficult for Van Gisbergen. And he's going to do the same, no doubt for Jamie Wincup. Tanda's having a fair crack at Van Gisbergen, meanwhile. He moved it out and had a little look down the inside at turn 11. So Tanda's not out of this to knock Van Gisbergen off for the final race ever at Sydney Olympic Park. Doing, 20 mate? laps remaining, a full-on sprint. David Couchy on the radio, 20 laps remaining. And he's trying now down the inside. He can't quite get up there, he can because Courtney makes a mistake. He made the same mistake yesterday. He ran in there too deep, he lost the spot, he ran wide, couldn't get a turn, and McLaughlin gets by. So that's a gift. That's a freebie for Wink Cup. 
Adrian just said, did he say anything? Because it was a little bit odd. All of a sudden, he just outbreaked himself and skipped wide. This is the replay into one from Jamie Wincup's point of view. And as you said, quite rightly, that's an early Christmas gift. And so that's one more spot for Wincup. He's up to fourth now. Next in the queue for him is David Reynolds. Wow, this is a great battle. There's a fair bit of air between Reynolds and Wincup at the moment. We'll keep an eye on that for you. It's currently 1.2 seconds. You're right, Van Gisbergen is under threat here at the moment from Tander, and Reynolds is well and truly into this. This would be a big result for David Reynolds if he could stay where he is at the moment. What a great race. And this will be a graphic example of what track position does because Winkup will give you the lap times as he tries to close this gap down on Dave Reynolds because it's one thing to get to Dave Reynolds, it's another to get by. So let's have a look at the numbers. Van Gisbergen does a 29.27. Tander, a 29.07. Dave Reynolds, a 29.23. And Jamie Winkup, a 28.90. The fastest car on the track at the moment. Tander is having a genuine look here on Van Gisbergen at the moment. And for Reynolds, currently in position number three, on for a season best result if he can stay where he is or improve on it. Leanne Tander, top right of screen, Garth White. Newly crowned Australian Formula 4 champion. Big week for females in motorsport because Molly Taylor won the Australian Rally Championship for Subaru as well. Fantastic. Congratulations. And uh, well done, Leanne. Now her husband's got the spotlight well on him at the moment. And hunting down Shane Van Gisbergen. I was going to make the point about Reynolds. Best of the season for him was way back in Adelaide at the very beginning. Fifth. So a third for David would be handsome. Certainly would. He's very good on the streets. We've seen real flamboyance and exuberance from Dave Reynolds. The Gold Coast and here. And very nice braking. In fact, Dave Reynolds made time on everybody into turn nine in the top ten shootout earlier today. Give you the lap times again because Winkup's about three tenths faster than Van Gisbergen. Again, the fastest car on the track. Look at the gap. He's closed that gap down massively, Jamie Winkup. Boys, I'm going to throw something else out there, a bit of a, <coughs> a theory on this one. But SVG is uh, backing them up so that yeah. Winkup can have a crack. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You knew I was going to say that, were you? So that's what I reckon's going on. I, I think he's got he's got the car underneath him to do whatever he wants at the moment, SVG. And I think uh, he's going to help his teammate try and get a couple more spots and have a final one-two for Triple Eight at uh, Homebush. You're not for hiding behind the grassy knoll wondering about JFK theories, are you there? Oh, absolutely. I'm, huh? I'm very, very down that path. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cynic. Thanks, um, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody I've, got else. I've got a bit of a list. I can go through it later. Somebody else in the box suggested that a few moments ago. Is he backing them up? I, uh, I'm not sure. Harder to play that game in, in this category. And uh, Backing him up means almost certainly getting past the way things look out there at the moment. So uh, the gaps have opened up just a little bit at the moment, but uh, interesting to contemplate, Greg. 0.6 of a second, first to second. And Gisbergen over Tander. Some cool shots come out of this racetrack, and there's some telemetry on the left-hand side. That's coming from Garth Tander's car at the moment. Puts you in the picture at home as to the pace of the cars around this venue. Heaps of those tight second gear, 60-odd K corners. They are the sorts of corners that fry the tyre when you pick the throttle up out the other side. That's what they've had to manage, but the safety car gives them a nice reprieve in that area. 0.69 of a second, three quarters of a second effectively, first to second. Now, so let's just check lap speed, Scopey. So 28.6 for Van Giz, 28.8 for Tanda, 8.9 for Reynolds, 8.7 for Wincup. So Wincup very close in speed to Van Gisbergen. They're the two quickest cars out there. He's, he probably got hurt in terms of ultimate lap speed then because he's actually caught Dave Reynolds. So the pace gain over those two laps was roughly half a second that he had over Dave. When you get to the next car, you obviously can't show that pace without making a manoeuvre down the inside somewhere. Now, where does he do it? He's been very good at turn nine. So Jamie will be trying to set him up, starts here. You've got to get the run through six, seven, and then you've got to ensure that when you stop the car at the top of the hill here for Dawn Fraser Avenue, that you make a beautiful, clean exit. Very straight, big slide there for Dave Reynolds. He's probably a little bit too far back this time, but that's the exit spot that he's got to work on. He's been very good 
for those of you that know this precinct, that's the Novotel on the right-hand side, the train station just adjacent to the circuit here now, on driver's right. And then down to turn 11, where it's very easy to lock the rear wheels and make a little mistake in the closing stage of this lap. Little double left. This is where the circuit's just breaking there on the right. It uses a lot of kerb. And there's two primary passing spots. Down here, at turn one. And down the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue at turn nine. Dave Reynolds will be doing everything he can possibly do to hang on for a podium for Erebus in the final event of 2016, the final time ever at Sydney Olympic Park. Davey's got a 100% finishing record at this location. He's had a couple of podiums here as well, including a runner-up spot last year. So he brought form to the place as an individual. But what's impressive about the run in the Penrite car is they've got it adjusted up to work very well here. And we saw it at the Gold Coast as well. And remember, I know they came in and did tyres late in the game at Bathurst, but he came away from Bathurst with the lap record there. So they're slowly but surely developing that car to being a very quick car at the moment. And they're trading punches lap by lap pace-wise out there with the Red Bull cars, which have been the masterclass of the business in the recent past. One of the things that will be hurting Link up a little bit was those three or four laps where he had to basically do qualifying lap times to make up that gap or bridge the gap to Dave Reynolds. And you get nothing for nothing in this in this game, do you? You don't, you don't get, from a driver's perspective, when you work that hard, you make the gain, you get to the back of the next car, but you know you've used the tyre hard to get there. So you don't continue to get tyre performance and a yield from the tyre when you work that hard. On that lap, 28.46 for Van Gisbergen, 28.95 for Tanda, 28.89 for Reynolds, and 29.0 for Winkup. So, of course, they're the same time because they're latched together, but Van Gisbergen then made half a second on Garth Tanda. The second quickest car on the racetrack on that last lap was actually McLaughlin there in the Volvo because he's got fresh air both sides. So that's helping his cause a little bit as these guys get racier. That'll bring him into this party a little as well in car number 33, Wilson Security Volvo. There he is. He's clear of Courtney who made that mistake several laps ago down at one. So is Shane Van Gisbergen going to move it on to eight race victories in 2016? 1.48 seconds in his favour suggests he might be able to do that at the moment with 15 laps remaining. Looking rearward in turn eight from Reynolds' car. Bad gear change. Oh, and look at that. Look at the amount of wriggling going on with the wind cup mobile down there into turn nine. Barely pulled it up, had a long, hard think about it. He slip sliding all over the place, trying to put a move on David Reynolds. This is the great battle for third at the moment. Van Gisbergen over Tanda one and two. And it's a very fast Jamie Wincup trying to put a move on David Reynolds. And we saw a lot of this in recent years when David was at ProDrive, but we haven't seen as much of it in the recent past. So this is a great performance here from Reynolds, Penwright and Erebus to be mixed up with these guys. And he's having a big crack here at the moment because it's about a podium and honour at the end of the championship season for David Reynolds. And for Wink Up, it means using more of everything. Mark made the point earlier in the call. You've got to get into the brake pedal harder, use the throttle more on exit, lean up on the tyre, and you're blindsided a lot of the time, braking references and turning points. It means that you tend to use more of all the resources that you have at your fingertips and at your feet. And so for Wink Cup, though he's pressing on at the moment, it's also taking a little bit out of his energy. So he's got to be a bit careful in that respect because not too far behind him is Scotty McLaughlin, whose car is quick at the moment. This is where we saw Dave Reynolds miss a gear shift on the previous lap, which gave Wink up a run at him into turn nine. This is the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue over a little roller coaster. Break stability and ride control for Wind Cup into turn nine Beautiful. is perfect, isn't yep. it? It's, it's been a real strength. So they're focused on that as a performance area. You said before, it's only a couple of really good trusted spots around here where you can effectively make the pass. So one of the things that they do in the practice lead up to these events, Betty Clemenko, Alistair McVeigh and Barry Ryan, corresponding garage at Red Bull, 
Dave Couchy, engineer for Jamie Wincup. Um, one of the things they do, not only are they trying to get the fastest car and the car that's going to be economic with its fuel and look after its rubber, but they're trying to also focus on making strengths in the places where you can pass because you don't need to make speed in some areas that give you no yield. There are some parts on this racetrack where you might make a slightly quick race car, but it actually adds up to zero for you because it doesn't do anything. So here are the margins. Quick look at the gaps between all. Shane Van Gisbergen. There's Garth Tander. Fresh air, fresh air. Not much of it between these two. Reynolds and then Wincup. And then just look in the background because that blue and white Volvo is not far afield. Courtney's recovered a little bit just in the recent past as well, and he's stalking the back of the Volvo. 13 laps remaining. For a long, hard, busy year, more than 6,000 kilometres of racing. We're into our 29th race of the championship season. We've effectively crowned our champion. Oh, it's the fence, by nothing. The boys have got a lot of confidence at this end of the weekend, so they've done enough laps around here now Friday with two 40-minute sessions, then quali on Saturday, 250 k's yesterday afternoon, more quali this morning, and then for 10 of them a shootout this afternoon, followed then by the race that we're well into at the moment. So they've got the rhythm of the place. They know what they can and can't get away with. They are seeing this racetrack in millimetre terms at the moment. There's a point in the weekend with a low heart rate where you're mentally totally in the zone. It's a flowing rhythm and all of the detail comes easily and they can hustle the car without taking too much out of themselves in personal exertion. That's what you're seeing out there at the moment with some of the world's best oh. drivers and a big moment there for Michael Caruso. Barely wrestled that Nissan off the wall. Dave Reynolds has responded on the previous lap. He was the fastest car with a 28.9. So he's just broken that gap and been able to establish about half a second. Have a look at this. This is Michael Caruso, a little bit of understeer, and he keeps it off the fence. He and Scott Pye were very close to going in the tyres there. Just check this out. Scott Pye did. I wonder if there's something on the road down there. Maybe. For both cars to do that like that. Both cars locked up. Yeah, that's a strange one. You don't often see two cars straight off the road like that. And there's the gap that I was referring to with David Reynolds and Jamie Winkup. And for Dave Reynolds, you said it before, his best result this year on the streets of Adelaide was a fifth in race three there. For this team and all the changes, as Betty Clamico, team owner, the structural changes internally, Alistair McVeigh there is third in alongside Barry Ryan, who was a lead engineer at Holden Racing Team for many years. And they've done a great job through the course of this season to improve this car constantly. And as you said before, Neil, it's a real credit to them for them to be punching away with the genuine heavyweights of this industry. Van Gisbergen leads from Tanda. Dave Reynolds just in front of Winkup. Winkup's coming back at him a little bit now. And McLaughlin, who's been working hard all weekend to beat Craig Lowndes for third position in this year's championship. Just enjoying the sights and sounds here on the run to turn eight. Van Gisbergen turns in from a very wide point down there at turn nine, right up against the concrete blocks. This is looking from the rear bumper of David Reynolds' car. Wheel spin and shudder between first and second gear as he flat shifts. Hurts the rear tyre when you do that. Yep. Feathers them up. And this is the final corner. And you, you'll see Scaifey grinning up there in the pit building on the right, in the commentary box. Wave mark. Just did. They transit that area on the run to turn one pretty quickly, don't they, down Australia Avenue, heading in a northerly direction. He's actually holding his own there at the moment, so I reckon what I, I mentioned before, Mark, that for Wind Cup, all of that energy that he expended to get where he is, has actually taken a bit of nutrition out of him. Totally agree. Van Gisbergen just went off. Ooh. Neil, he just went through 
the turn two, three chicane, that little complex. So he must have had a moment under brakes. He went straight through there. And on the last lap, there was less than a tenth of a second separating the top six cars. Unbelievably close. Staggering intensity. Uh, yeah, I didn't pick that. I was looking up now on the computer timing and see that uh, Van Gisbergen's done the straight line down there. And uh, if, if he got that wrong to any serious degree, he could give the track position to Tander and then it would be on. Garth was the winner at Sandown. He was in the picture at Bathurst, in the picture again at the Gold Coast. He's the engineer for Shane Van Gisbergen. Grant person picked up his first title yesterday. So, lap speed check once again. No so, time for Van Gisbergen because he went through. 29.8 for Tander, 29.2 for Reynolds. 9-0 problem here for Rick Kelly. And it's uh, just about made it back to the pit lane entry. That's a question of if you can, isn't it? So, yeah, no time registered for Van Gisbergen because of the straight lining down at turn two. That. This is awesome. I think that was a facetious remark. Yeah, I don't think that was genuine. <laughs> Super duper awesome. He won't be happy because of the fuel issue from earlier. On board now with Chas Mostert. And this is the run through. Here it is. Makes a little mistake. Oh, and he turns it inside the curb. He was going to run wide. We have oh, a car safety car. stopped on the pit entry road. <laughs> the teams are pitting. They can get around that car. It hasn't blocked, but that's the reason for the safety car. Safety car scramble. I heard the voice of Tim Schenken light up when you were in description there a moment ago, Mark, and they're going to wind. They're going to try and wind it in on the starter motor. That's Cam's race control. Steve Priest, the gentleman in the grey shirt. And in the white shirt as a race director, Tim Schenken. So he's got his finger on the starter button and he's winding along on the starter to try and grind it into the pit lane with the car in gear. So they'll have to be careful coming in because you go around there, you're blind, there's Frosty. So he's going around the outside of Rick. So does James Moffat. Oh, not much room there. So does Scott Pye. Rick cleverly. Pulls it as far left. I am here. So he's now yelling at the guys to come and get me because I'm here. I'm in the pit lane. Yeah. The reason for them all rushing in is to put brand new or fresher tyres on. So with the condensed field, for those that were down the order, midfield and beyond, by getting a fresh tyre on the car like Scott Pye's just done and getting back in the train, they'll be racy when we go racing once again. Computer currently shows eight laps remaining. So that's it's not because they needed fuel or any of those things. They're just purely coming in. Those that don't have track position of any consequence want to get some rubber on so that they can hook into it. It's an interesting decision to not bring Craig Lowndes in now with that one because a lot of those guys Did around him are going to have fresh tyres. Give us a battle for third position in the championship. Yeah. PDM is the power the distribution module. No, nothing happened before the Thank engine you jumped for that died. acronym clarification. And uh, that's a, one of the control so items supplied by Motec, part of the engine control and management system. Jump battery for the car. That's one of those Braille lithium batteries that I spoke about. They're much smaller, much lighter than a conventional lead acid battery. So it's been horrid day, hasn't it? For Rick Kelly. Highest place Nissan out there at the moment. And for Todd Kelly, he's ninth. Done a good job this weekend, Todd Kelly, in terms of race pace. So Van Gisbergen didn't need that. He had the little gap, made that little mistake. He'll need to get himself back into a rhythm again when this gets restarted. Just a short-term golf, goldfish memory. Who, who was first in the queue behind Rick there that came in for tyres then? Mark Winnemont. Thank you, Mark. So, uh, using that information and running with it, um, Mark Winterbottom then keep an eye on him because he's going to have some crew. And uh, he's currently in 14th position with a fresh set of tyres, fresher set of tyres. Thank you for
bailing me out there. Crompo, you question marked about Craig Lowndes before, I think, and, and why they didn't perhaps bring him in for fresher rubber, given the move by some of those around him in the order. Now, Ken Douglas and the Vortex crew tell me that they feel that the, the loss of track position would be too great and the potential for a shortened race, they feel it wasn't the, the best move. So they, they've elected not to do that. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be right on the cusp of time certainty. That's right. That's exactly right. Well cleared up there, Greg, because that's the biggest point of time certain finish and how that was going to affect Craig Lowndes, Murph. Well, we can remember uh, Mark Winterbottom had a horrid day yesterday, which means he had uh, some tyres up his sleeve. So the tyres that they have just put on the number one car are one lap old, so they are brand new. The race must stop at uh, 74 laps, 250 k's or 1742 Local time plus one lap. It's currently 17.35 and 8, 9, 10 seconds. At the third stroke, I count. should shut up. Stop counting. It's been a long season, folks. One lap short, we're hearing Dave Reynolds, and he's on for his best result of the year. It would be a great way for David Reynolds to finish 2016 as the Lexus safety car tops wow. the rise. Where at, is that? That's the end of Dawn Fraser Avenue. That is a really cool shot. Um, I understand uh, from uh, our support team that that's uh, Gordon Dean on the jib down there. Gordy's been part of our motor racing coverage and crew for many, many years. And uh, that's a beautiful shot. We should thank all the guys for their efforts again this and season and girls. It's been uh, a hell of a ride as we get this restart done now. Shane Van Gisbergen, the young Kiwi, first one to win the championship since 1991 for Jim Richards as they weave the cars to get all of the residual rubber off the surface of the tyre down to turn one. And we cut right up in behind Dave Reynolds. This is going to be an intriguing battle with six laps remaining. So Van Gisbergen, half a second in hand on the rundown. He's got Tander tucked in behind it too. Then it's Reynolds. Then it's Wincup. Then it's McLaughlin in touch. A little gap then back to Courtney. Slade, Davis and Percat lost it. That's your 10. Lowndes just on the outside. I'm just saying about Todd Kelly. And he had a drama going down to he turn one. Hard. Yeah, I saw him in the background. And he's currently 18th. So he was the highest place in this and he was ninth. Cool shot on the exit of turn eight. Here's the gaps. Reynolds is at the head of the queue that you're looking at there in third position. And there's the two leaders just up front at nine. So once again, Van Gisbergen's made a good start on a cool tyre and he's taken pressure off straight away and we don't think it will run its full distance in terms of the published laps or kilometres. Going to be a lap short. Lee Holdsworth covers down the inside. I think Scott Pye was the next behind him and then James Moffat. So here comes Van Gisberg and it's now one second. Last lap, 129.4. Oh, problems for Shea. So Shea Davies has made it into the wall down there at turn nine. There's been some damage on that car today. Leanne Tander understands the stress of what's going on out there at the moment because David Reynolds is applying the blowtorch to Garth Tander and David has his own hands full at the moment because here comes Wincup. Very nice restart by Shane Van Gisbergen and a nice opening lap from the restart. Half a second faster than the next car. Dave Reynolds trying to hold off Jamie Winkup and Courtney is right up in behind McLaughlin. Now Lowndes is going to be the guy with Mark Winterbottom on fresh tyres. He's going to be the first one for Mark Winterbottom to attack after that tyre change. Now I just heard Todd Kelly on the radio, so someone get on the pit wall and go and have a listen as I come by. So clearly he must have dropped a cylinder or something. Now look here in the background, because James Courtney's got a hot defence going on at the moment. Here comes Wincup having a sneak preview down the inside as well. 
He's feigning that move that he might pull later. And in behind here, we've got Slade with Davison on the oh. outside. They almost end up walling each other in that process. They pop out the other side only just. Here comes Percat down the inside as well. It's on at the back end of 2016, just like it was at the start. And I don't know what happened to James Courtney because he was right up in behind McLaughlin. So he's dumped a heap of time there. And is now susceptible. Now Winkup might get down the inside of Dave Reynolds now. That's the closest he's been. And they were talking to him and he would be well aware of Winkup's presence at that stage. So Winkup now getting very serious about trying to pull a move. Reynolds covers to the inside on the run to turn two. The minute you go off the racing line, you're automatically sacrificing the best track speed, but he wants to cover, but it makes him slower. That allows McLaughlin to get into the game as well. Now, Winkup had a moment coming out of four that time. He lost a little bit of ground. Got to stay off the radio to Dave Reynolds now. No worry about the radio, chap. He'll have his head down, him. he knows how serious this is. Finish the last race at Sydney Olympic Park, the last race of our championship on the podium. And one of the all-time greats, the six-time champion, Winkup, right up in behind him. McLaughlin, again, right up in behind Winkup too. Courtney, I think, has got a slowly deflating left rear tire. Ah. I just picked up some radio chat. I think they've got a problem now. I may have crossed radio channels there, but I think there's an issue. So that might explain your question mark before. The focus at the moment is on this battle. Van Gisbergen's checking out. It's 1.87 seconds. Shane Overgar. But this is a great battle for third. What a way to end the championship year. Todd Kelly is limping in the Nissan. He asked the boys to have a listen as he went by. He's got no pace. What a drama after our long, hot, hard day's work. An emotional couple of laps now for Garth Tander. His final race for the famous Holden Racing Team. Currently second, qualified pole earlier today. And the final couple of laps in the Team Red Commodore. And boys, you did hear that correct. I'm looking at the tyre pressures actually now as we speak, and it's uh, under 20, it's 19.3 PSI in the left rear tyre. Not good. And that will start to make the car wriggle around and then overstress the tyre. You can eventually break some of the cords in it if not careful. So he's going to really have to tippy toe that car and be able to get it home. And that's one of the advantages of the tyre pressure senders that are in the cars now because that information can come back and Greg's shared it with us. The teams are monitoring it as well. A look down the inside again for Wincup. Reynolds is fighting for a podium life here. And Wincup's right behind. Ready to pounce if there's a tiny mistake. McLaughlin's just lost touch ever so gently. Meantime, Van Gisbergen stepping the pace up. He's moved further out. It's 2.2 seconds now. Here we go once again. Another great exit out of the final corner for Winkup. 3.4 kilometres of racing to run in Sydney. The last time at Sydney Olympic Park. A fight for the podium between David Reynolds and Jamie Winkup. Shane Van Gisbergen is going to win this one. Garth Thand is going to come home in second. It's a question mark for third. And this is real race driver stuff now for Dave Reynolds with Winkup applying maximum pressure into turn two, three, four, down to the fastest corner at turn five. Now, what he's got to do, he's got to understand the strengths and weaknesses. He's got to organise himself to come out of turn six and seven as well as he can. This is the spot because what Winkup will want to do is get a run out of the next corner at turn eight. This is the top of Dawn Fraser Avenue. Can we come go up there well enough? No, he can't. Great job, Dave Reynolds. Davey's exit was good, but we know that Wincup strong under breaks down here at nine. And he has a big look. He throws the Commodore no. down there, Wincup, and they make light contact. But Jamie gets out of it, and Reynolds is going to hang on. It's been 18 months since an Erebus podium, and the last one was Will Davison in Western Australia. Our eyes now go to the front. Our champion-elect is going to win his eighth race of 2016. Shane Van Gisbergen is the winner on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. Go down to second. David Reynolds gets on the podium in third. No 
number one, 2016, the Giz. Yeah, mate, just what a season. You the field pass, the whole field pass. What a race. What a venue. Red Bull Racing Australia. Shane Van Gisbergen puts the ultimate exclamation mark on his championship year. Garth Tander finishes in tremendous style for the Holden Racing Team. From a pole position, a conversion to a second placing. And David Reynolds shows the little team that could. An unbelievable performance to grab a podium for the first time in a year and a half. And continues his fine form at this racetrack as we farewell Sydney Olympic Park in 2016. And there'll be tears in the eyes of Garth Tander with his final drive for Holden Racing Team as we know it. And what a superb job as James Moffat comes up to congratulate Shane Van Gisberg. And what an unbelievable effort by the Kiwi this year as Betty Clemenko and the rest of the Erebus team celebrate their first podium of the season. And Dave Reynolds, fantastic achievement to stay in front of Jamie Winkup. And for all those Holden Racing Team fans to watch Garth Tander and James Courtney finish off the final factory status race for the famous red team. From 1990 to 2016, the factory team for Holden and the most successful team in the history of our sport. Another victory for Shane Van Gisberg and moves his career tally on to 19 now, Scapey. Tremendous performance. Total podium count for him now is 66. So he's rapidly notching up the numbers. For Garth Tander, yet another podium moves him on to 92. So tremendous innings. And very pleased to see the joy on the faces of that entire crew down there. Not only yesterday for the way in which both the drivers ran, but to see that pole position stitched together earlier today for them. And that was a mighty lap. That was a very, very good lap that Tander put together. So uh, there'll be a lot of emotion. Greg Murphy, one of his mates, just steps into the lane there to give Garth Tander the thumbs up as do the men and women of the Holden Racing Team. So there we have it, the Virgin Australia victory lane. Now Shane Van Gisbergen does not have to look after these tyres. <laughs> they may well be on for the chop. <laughs> he's, been, he's been talking about what he may or may not do to them and everyone's been asking him. He's got the chicken flag. A great symbol of achievement. P1 2016, he's engineer Grant McPherson. There's our champion. And this is going to be interesting. <laughs> so wondering how he'll be able to rotate the car, hold onto the chequered flag, and not have the door crush his fingers in the process. <laughs> Here we go. Goodbye to the Dunlop Soft Tires on the back of car number 97. It's smoke signals at Sydney Olympic Park. And a nearly a little bit of panel damage to boot. Bump it up to the fence. And then he just keeps on pulling gears. We saw him do this at the Gulf Coast. What a year he's had. Just been extraordinary. Great mentoring and guidance by Triple Eight Racing. Grant first in particular. <laughs> and <there's, laughs> he'll set fire to it if he's not careful. <laughs> Tim Schenken. The race to hey. watching on you, Shane. Well done. That is a champion's performance this year. He's deserved the crown. He's driven unbelievably well with incredible style and flair. Relentless pursuit of speed and perfection. He came to the championship as a teenager with Team Kiwi with the support of Ross and Jimmy Stone in 2007. Spent a long time with that organisation. Went through the emotional roller coaster in 2012 of wanting to depart the sport. 
there was the question mark retirement. He then joined Techno Autosports for three years, and I think you've got to pay a dividend to Steve Hallam in helping bring maturity yep. and good decision-making and good racecraft to the game for Shane Van Gisbergen. He's now with Toyota in the US in their NASCAR program. And then Roland Dane recognised the talent and gave him a run at Triple Eight Race Engineering in the Red Bull car. And giving him the tools of trade has taken him to another level. Come, Jan. It's OK. No worries. Put your suit up. Congratulations. End of an era for the Holden Racing Team. End of an era for yourself with this team. But you're on the podium. What a way to, to wind up a sensational career with the Holden Racing Team. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, we didn't have the speed to go with Shane. I think he was just cruising around in front of us, to be honest. But um, car was really good. We struggled in the first stint, and that's when he got us. And then we've, we tuned it up through the next two stints, and the car got a lot better. So uh, thanks very much to all the HRT fans that support us over the whole journey. Some fans have supported the team for 26 years, and all the fans that supported me during the time that I've been in HRT, I really appreciate it, so thank you. All the sponsors we've had all along the way, it's been fantastic support. So um, good luck to these guys next year, and I uh, look forward to racing them on track. An incredibly special moment for yourself and the team. Enjoy those celebrations, GT. Cheers, thanks. David Reynolds, what an unbelievable end to that race for yourself and Erebus Motorsport V8. You held off uh, charging Jamie Winkup. Congratulations for a podium with Erebus. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I just said to the boys, sorry it took so long. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. But uh, yeah, man, that race was really, really full on at the end there. I ran out, I had so much stuff going on. I ran out of water. I bored myself dry. That's why they gave me a stop in the last, they gave me a drink in the last stop. I lost comms, I had to keep plugging it in. Yeah, I had heaps of dramas, but um, yeah, it was a fantastic race. My car has been beautiful all weekend, and it's it's uh, hopefully a sign of things to come. Your first podium with Erebus Motorsport V8. I hope we get something special on the podium. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. I'll save them for when I win. Okay. Thank you, David. No worries. Thanks. He looks in pretty good nick, doesn't he, after a guy that's just done nearly 250 kilometres. Moves on to career podium number 12 for David Reynolds, but we focus now on Shane Van Gisbergen to come into the Virgin Australia Victory Lane as our champion of 2016. Great to see industry peers applauding the performance. 27 years of age. He's generated a lot of support with his flamboyant and never say die approach to racing. He is a master on street circuits. This is the one that he's been chasing. Yes, those rear tyres are shot, Shane. Yes, very true. And we said yesterday, Neil, that that was a career-defining moment, but it's really now, because this is the time that this sinks in as he gives Roland Dane. <laughs> Roland's even got the shirt ready. They've all 2016 championed up, haven't they? Shane Van Gisbergen, we spoke to you yesterday, but today it's official. We can call you the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Champion. Well done. That sounds pretty cool. Um, what an awesome day. What a great race with Garth. Uh, pretty tough there, but um, so stoked. Thanks to our team, we've uh, had a fantastic year. Um, unfortunately, Craig couldn't get into third, but 1-2 um, is pretty awesome. So for my first year, it's been amazing joining this team. So thank you to everyone. Tell us what this means to you. You so, so you get a little bit emotional yesterday. The first New Zealander since Jim Richards, your first time, year with this team. What does it mean? Oh, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's a lifetime goal, and to finally achieve it is, is pretty special. So I want to come back next year and, and try it again. Pretty exciting year, and um, thanks so much to these guys. If they've uh, helped me settle in and come away with the fruits. And now, uh, how did you rate your burnouts? <laughs> Thank you. Well, well done, Shane. And uh, he's been in a great battle in this recent past with Jamie Wincup. He moves on to his eighth victory of 2016. Edges one spot clear there in terms of total victories over Jamie Wincup. And big celebration, big moment. Number one, 2016, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's talking about having a battle with Roland to hang on to the number 97, which is his favourite number. That might be a mission. In fact, 
I think uh, I just spotted in the background they're putting the number one stickers on now. So I'd say Roland one, Shane Van Gisbergen zero in that battle at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's our unofficial results, and he's home by a second. A couple of safety car interventions over Garth Tander and David Reynolds, Jamie Wincup, Scotty McLaughlin, Courtney, who battled that tyre problem to the end. Then Slade, Davison, Lowndes, James Moffat came home in tenth. Great performance, James Moffat, from what was a pretty tough afternoon for him, but good pace. And then those just outside the 10, Mostert and Winterbottom teammates, Pye and Caruso, Holdsworth, uh, Percat, Shea Davies, Chris Pither, Todd Kelly who had that problem, weird problem going on with performance at the end, Heimgartner, then Coulthard, the last of the classified finishes. And uh, Scott McLaughlin, the final race for Gary Rogers Motorsport in the Volvo. And you claim that third position in the championship, mate. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's that's the goal we set out to achieve uh, this weekend. And yeah, so happy it, it sort of hit at home the last few laps. So, you know, this is the last time I was driving that. Got out of the car, gave it a tap on the roof and said thank you. So thanks to everyone at GRM, Will's Security Pace, all our supporters. The like, uh, last four years have been fantastic. So I'm um, looking forward to the future, but uh, I'm sure I'm the enemy from now on. <laughs> Good on you, buddy. Well done. Cheers, thanks. Oh, we love him. Get him up here. Oh, <laughs> Well done, Scotty McLaughlin. And that was a cracking race. And this is going to be a very special and emotional podium. It's time for the final podium at the end of a special chapter here at Olympic Park. And the final one for the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. This is the Coates Hire Sydney 500 podium. Yeah, Rusty. And that was David Reynolds. First place today from Red Bull Racing Australia, Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> What a farewell to the famous red team. Second today from the Holden Racing Team, Garth Tander. He fought hard for third place today from Erebus Motorsport, David Reynolds. Representing our Castrol Edge winning team from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jason Briggs. Now to present the trophies for race 29 of the season. Our third place trophy, courtesy of the Virgin Cabin crew, Michelle Salmon. Our second place trophy, thanks to Sarah Rosales, National Marketing Manager, Pino Australia. The Castrol Team Trophy, thanks to the sponsorship and PR manager from Castrol, Sue Dilger. And our first place trophy for this afternoon's race from the Executive General Manager, Sales at Coates Hire, Greg Parfit. We saw the trophy delivered earlier today by some legends of our sport. Please now welcome, ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars champion. He's there, Shane Van Gisbergen from Red Bull Racing Australia. And to present the trophy, the CEO from Coates Hire, Mr. Jeff Fraser. What a season. Ladies and gentlemen, the Race 29 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship podium, Coates Hire, Sydney 500. It's fitting, isn't it, that the champion wins the last race of the year. We talked a lot about him having to go to bed on Saturday night with more than 150 points. In the final analysis, it was 200 that got the job done. Shane Van Gisbergen over his teammate, Jamie Wincup, Scotty McLaughlin confirmed in the third place in the championship, and then Craig Lowndes in fourth position. So three of the top four belonging to Triple Eight Race Engineering, and it's on on the podium there at the moment between Shane and David. And I made the remark before about the number one and the number 97. Well, Roland managed to actually get both of those in that number there. So big moment for Shane in his career. Ten years in the making, more than 300 races. And the boys are soaking it up in front of an appreciative crowd. Really pleased for Garth Tander. What a way to finish off his career with the Holden Racing Team. And great to see David Reynolds and Erebus recovering from at sometimes difficult runs during the championship season to be right there when it counted at the back end. We'd like to hear from you. Jump on the Supercars website and vote for your top performer.
plenty of brilliant drives this weekend, not just today, but throughout the weekend. Lots of things to stir comment and emotion. So a big result for Triple Eight Race Engineering for everybody at Red Bull Racing Australia. The boys and the girls there, they are deserving champions. It's now for our final race of the year, race number 29 on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park. A ripping start, great conversion pole sitter. Garth Tander gets away nicely. And here's where a lot of that bonnet damage occurred that I spoke about very early in the day. So lots of people tripping over, lots of other people down at turns two, three and four. Many bonnets, headlights, front bumper assemblies and lots of other bits damaged in the process. Very strong and unrelenting performance from Shane Van Gisbergen to just chip away and chip away and chip away on Garth Panda. And his teammate, Jamie Wincup, was very speedy today as well, but he didn't quite have track position when it counted. That made life that little bit harder. Remember, he recovered from 10th in the shootout after that mistake. We all raised our eyebrows when there was the contact between Van Gisbergen and Tander in the pit lane. Would there be a penalty or not? And the rules fell in favour of not. Unfortunately, at turn eight for Cam Waters, problem into the fence. And as he tried to extract himself, he ended up being tagged by Fabian Coulthard. Big damage on both those Ford Falcons. Several safety car interventions today. And this was a second one for Jason Bright, unfortunately ending his career on a sad note with Brad Jones Racing and Team BOC. Damage on that car, whacking the wall at turn five. What it was doing though was recompressing the field and making us absolutely salivate at the prospect of these amazing battles. And for Betty Clemenko and everybody down at Erebus, they were crossing their fingers and holding their breath because we cut through everything at David Reynolds. But in the end, the spotlight belonged to this man. A brilliant performance in a brilliant championship year, Shane Van Gisbergen. Pit board shows the number one, and the reaction of Betty was as though they'd won a championship as well. So a colossal burnout from Shane Van Gisbergen, a tremendous second placing for Garth Tander, and a ripping third place for David Reynolds. What a stunning battle for the championship season in 2016 and what a brilliant drive for Shane. Well done to everybody at Red Bull Racing Australia.